life you feel me and you already know what's going down today bruh so guess what guess what huh turn it off turn it off turn it all the way off now yeah how is everybody doing today Please allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Brandon Bravon Towns, host of that show called Sports Plus Life, that their sports podcast where we talk about all of the necessary topics in sports and all of the necessary topics in life. And I hope everybody is having a wonderful, marvelous Monday. It's chilly outside. It got chilly real quick. What's crazy? It's like two days ago, it was like 75 degrees. Today, it's like 50. I needed, I had frost on my windows this morning. Like, it's crazy. This Virginia weather be crazy. But um, before I get started, um, I got to start on a uh, on a serious note. Um, we, I hope everybody who listens to this just takes time just for a few minutes, just a few short minutes, just to say a prayer for the state of our world and i'm being so serious i'm not trying to be dramatic or anything because you know just heard about this morning this shooting that happened on the university of virginia campus in charlottesville where now unfortunately three students uh, have been killed unfortunately and um and again we need to say prayers not for just the state of this country but for the state of this world three uh, three students three players from the university of virginia football team have been killed it's just awful it's unfortunate and apparently the person who was in custody was an ex-player themselves so i just don't know what to do with that right now what in the world like i just people have just totally kind of just like wigged out you know just the to think that violence and gunplay is the rationalization of any disagreement that you are dealing with it it's it still baffles me because you know i i like to be that of a person of let's live to fight another day you know i mean we i don't you know you don't have to fight period but if worst case scenario let's live to fight another day and you don't know what's going on in somebody else's life but you just like to think that there was a other option that 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 there was another option that could have been taken to avoid this so i just wanted to start off by saying that before I, we get into the show and again my thoughts and prayers go out to everybody involved especially the three families of those students who are now unfortunately no longer with us so now, I honestly wanted to touch on that. And people, again, let's say a prayer for the state of not just our country, but for our world, because it just seems that we continuously resort to violence to solve to solve conflicts. And that doesn't solve conflicts. It just creates more. The <clears throat> the value of life is starting to di- is starting to diminish more and more and as a world, particularly as a country in the United States of America, we're starting to turn back into the wild, wild west where there really was no value of life. And we have to be better than that. Everybody. I'm not going to sit here and say black lives matter. Every life to me matters. OK, it, it does. It, it Every life to me matters. And we have to do better especially you're in college man it's supposed to be one of the funnest most memorable times of your life you don't want to go to college to become a statistic or a fatality no we do not so again my thoughts and prayers go out to the people uh, in charlottesville virginia which is about two hours from here and the families of the of the victims i i can only imagine what they're going through this morning and the holidays are right around the corner I mean, it it just sucks. It really does. And again, let's just let's keep that in mind. Let's let's spread love. Let's not spread BS. So with that being said, I would like to spread some love and I would like to give shout outs to uh, my family, my HS family and my family in general. 
And again, I'm going to shout out my sis uh, again. If you're looking for some type of Holloway, a, ho a holiday <laughs> decorations or custom made uh, decorations, hit up Heather's Craft Haven. Again, that is Heather's Craft Haven. Craft Haven 2021 at Gmail. That's one of the ways to get in contact with her. TikTok at Heather's Craft Haven and the website Heather's Craft Haven. Facebook.com or Facebook.com slash Heather's Cricket Creation. She does tumblers, keychains, bookmarks, ornaments, and t shirts. And they are made to order. Hit her up. Again, like I said last week, just got a couple of shirts from her. They were absolutely dope. And I'm going to get some Christmas ornaments from her as well. So I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. I hope everybody has a marvelous week. And, um, yeah, it's, it got cold. It got cold real quick. I'm, I'm working the extra day now uh, for the rest of the year on my job. So, um you know, I, I want to get this done today and tomorrow and be right back on the grind. But now it's time to get into the realm of sports. I'm ready. We ready. You ready. We all ready. So let's get to it. Boy, I got to tell you, for this Prediction League Monday, if there was a day where people could have covered some ground, made up some ground on me yesterday, as far as prediction goes, I was horrible. I was absolutely awful yesterday with my predictions, but I <laughs> that not that much ground was gained on me because the person who won the week was David. And y'all know David ain't catching up to me, man. But he won the week. I only got four right. Four, I got four games right yesterday. I was absolutely horrible. But let's go over the weekend review. Let's start off with the Thursday, uh, the Thursday night game, which was a wrong prediction by me. <laughs> I picked the Atlanta Falcons to beat the Carolina Panthers. Every time I have some type of expectation of the Atlanta Falcons, they always let me down. They lost to the Carolina Panthers 25 to 15. Didn't I say last week that I think the Falcons were going to win the NFC South? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I don't. I, I, I guess I was wrong on that one because Sunday in Germany, Sunday morning in Germany, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers won 21 to 16. Tom Brady. Everybody saying now that the divorce is final. Tom Brady is back. Bucks about to get it going. They survived a furious rally by Geno Smith and the Seattle Seahawks, but won the game nonetheless. God. Yeah, I ain't trying to see Tom Brady win shit, but it is what it is. The Buccaneers are in first place in the NFC South with a whopping record of 5-5. Five and five. In the game of the day, Rob, probably the game of the season thus far, the Minnesota Vikings came from behind to defeat the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo 30-33. Now, the motto of today's show was something very similar to the motto of around week two or week three. You thought you had it, but you didn't. The Buffalo Bills were up 27 to 10 in the second half. Josh Allen did play. There was questions of whether he would play or not. He suited up. He played. He threw for over 300 yards. Guess what? Didn't matter. Justin Jefferson may have had the greatest catch I've ever seen. We've been on the Odell catch for the last eight years because it was a spectacular catch. But think about the circumstances of each catch. Odell's catch was unbelievable. Not taking anything away from him. Not at all. But Justin Jefferson on 4th and 18 when the Vikings had to have it. Kirk Cousins threw it up. Damn near looked like a lollipop. I thought the ball, I thought the ball was intercepted. And Justin Jefferson snatched it from the defender with one hand, cradled it while going to the ground. And that was on fourth and 18 and went for a first down. The Minnesota Vikings, this, this, that game was crazy. Because then you thought the Vikings had taken the lead on a pass to Justin Jefferson, but his knee was down. Then on a fourth down try quarterback sneak, the Bills stopped them. So they had first down from their own one inch line. Josh Allen then fumbles the damn ball and Minnesota recovers for a touchdown to make it 30-27. Then Buffalo driving to tie the game survived a very controversial to say the least uh non-call on gabe davis's catch clearly that was a drop but buffalo was able to tie the game and minnesota took the lead in overtime for a field goal buffalo got a chance to see the ball and patrick peterson intercepted josh allen in the goal line at the goal line to secure the victory hey have we overhyped the buffalo bills have we undersold the minnesota vikings the Vikings are 8-1. Their only loss was to Bird Gang 
bitch. Excellent. But seriously, Kirk Cousins may have turned the corner in his career because I think about last week's game, coming back from 10 down in the fourth quarter to beat Washington. In the past, that was a game that Kirk Cousins would have lost. Uh, yesterday against Buffalo had a couple of horrible interceptions in the past those would be interceptions that Kirk Cousins would not be able to recover from but this year appears to be a different year their new coach McConnell seems to know what the hell he's doing the Vikings again are 8-1 and one, running away with the NFC North and as for the Buffalo Bills wrong with you I picked them to be in the Super Bowl a bunch of people picked them to be in the Super Bowl wrong with y'all Josh Allen was pretty much handed the MVP. You niggas are crazy! We may need to relook all of that because not only did the Buffalo Bills lose the game, they lost the lead on their division. I will get into that in a second. On to Chicago. Another case scenario. You thought you had it, but you didn't. The Bears were up on the Lions 24-10 in the second half, and then the fighting Dan Campbells came back to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat with the help of a missed extra point after a very long touchdown run by Justin Fields, who, by the way, the last couple of weeks in defeat has been absolutely spectacular. I mean, I I can't sneeze on that, but the Detroit Lions have won two straight games. <laughs> when the last time the Detroit Lions won two straight games and they actually won a road game? Ain't this about a bitch? On to Kansas City. The Kansas City Chiefs did what they were supposed to do, defeating the Jacksonville Jaguars 27 to 17. They are now seven and two and sit number one in the AFC. On to Miami. Ah, I mentioned the Buffalo Bills not just lost the game. They lost their lead on the division because the Miami Dolphins and their incredible offense continues to kick ass and take names. They defeated the Cleveland Browns 39 to 17. Hey, we talk about MVP talk, right? We wanted to give it to Josh Allen. I shit on that right now. I sneeze on that notion right now. Right now, if it was for me, I would have to say, oh, let's give some, let's give a look at Patrick Mahomes, who's probably in the lead right now for the MVP. But um, how about Tyreek Hill? Oh, how about Tua? What? And Tyreek Hill, by his standards, had an off game yesterday, catching just five passes for 44 yards. He still had a touchdown, though. Jalen Waddle caught four for uh, four for 66. Sherrifeld caught four for 63. Basically, what I'm trying to say is Tua is distributing that rock all around. And by the way, the Miami Dolphins are 7-3. and three. Sole possession of first place in the AFC East, which right now is looking like the realest division in football. Okay, on to the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey. The New York football giants continue to put the football world on notice saying, hey, y'all waiting for us to fall off. Guess what? It ain't happening. They defeated the Houston Texans 24 to 16. Say Quan Barkley is back. Pay that man his motherfucking money. Dude has got a little bit of an offensive line, got some protection, is now turned into the bell cow back that we all thought he was going to be coming out of Penn State. 35 carries, a buck, 52 yards, and a touchdown. And New York, don't try to be slick. I see what you're doing. When You never ran Saquon Barkley 35 times in the game. Don't try to run this man into the ground to get him hurt and worn out so now you don't have to pay him. The Titans don't even run Derek motherfucking Henry 35 times a game. But he is your offensive MVP. And the New York Giants are seven and two the Giants Brian Dayball serious coach of the year candidate seven and two keep it rolling New York on the Pittsburgh Steelers beat the Saints 20 to 10 two teams that honestly to me are going nowhere so who gives a fuck they won go Steelers Saints have let me down all season in Vegas the fighting Jeff Saturdays we all had we all heard the controversy the clusterfuck that was the Indianapolis Colts organization just seven short days ago with the firing of Frank Wright and the hiring of Jeff Saturday with no experience except for high school experience we can talk about the Rooney rule all we want but you know what the most dangerous team is a team that believes. And if Jeff Saturday is a motivator of grown ass men, well, then he did his job because wouldn't you know, Jeff Saturday is now the coach. And guess who's back at quarterback for the Colts? Matt Ryan. And guess who they were playing? The Raiders. Guess where they were playing him at? In Vegas. Guess what happened? The Raiders lost. God damn. 
And then afterwards, Derek Carr want to be crying at the goddamn podium. No, stop crying and win some games, biatch. But you know what? As a Bronco fan, I kind of laugh when the Raiders lose because, hey, join the party. We've been consensual losers, which gets me to our game against the Tennessee Titans. I actually like that matchup. I thought we would beat the Titans. We got up 10 to nothing. And then Russell Wilson turned back in the 2022 version of Russell Wilson, which is absolute shit. I mean, can we get on away from Nathaniel Hackett? I mean, we're tied up with Russ for the next seven years, but can we be done with Nathaniel Hackett? We were just coming off of a bye week, and we look pathetic offensively. Coming off of a bye week. You have got to be fucking kidding me. That's why I said two weeks ago, it must have been Halloween because we won a game. We couldn't even win a game in America, goddammit. Can we be done with Nathaniel Hackett? That should tell you all you need to know about this guy as a football coach. Coming off of a bye week, we put up 10 points in the first half and not a damn thing after that. We look like trash. Oh my God, you fucking stink, Hackett. You suck. Oh my gosh, but the only thing that made me feel better about my Denver Broncos looking like fly-covered garbage was in Green Bay. This was one of the games that I got wrong that I was damn sure happy I was wrong about. The Green Bay Packers somehow, someway found a way to come back and defeat those goddamn bum-ass creepy stupid ass Dallas Cowboys in overtime you know I motherfucking loved it you know but you know what to be honest with you <laughs> I had actually given up on the game when it was 28 to 14 Dallas I said like, yeah you know they just look a little bit too strong for Green Bay and then on top of that the Dallas Cowboys made history they made history yesterday Never in the 62-year history of that horrible franchise had they given up a, a two-touchdown lead going into the fourth quarter. Going into the fourth quarter when the Cowboys led by two touchdowns, they had never lost a game until yesterday. Congratulations, you sorry sons of bitches. <laughs> you lost the game, so that brings your record down to 6-3. and three. So with that loss... You now fell to third in the NFC East, the second realest division in the NFL, I must say, because the Giants won their 7-2. And, and, you know, the Eagles are still undefeated at 8-0, and, and they play Washington tonight. On to Los Angeles. The defending champions look horrible. Uh, Matt Stafford didn't play. Kyler Murray didn't play, actually. But the Arizona Cardinals did beat the Los Angeles Rams 27-17. And in the night game, the San Francisco 49ers had to come from behind victory to beat the Los Angeles Chargers, waiting for the 49ers to explode. I said it first. Now people all over TV land and sports debate land are starting to jump on the bandwagon. I said Philadelphia Eagles versus San Francisco 49ers in the NFC Championship game. Trust me, I got a good feeling about this one, even though we cannot sleep on the Minnesota Vikings any longer. We cannot do that. We'll be doing a disservice as football fans, and we like to call ourselves couch, co couch coaches, football experts, whatever. We cannot overlook this team. And the Vikings over their last two weeks have said, yo, yo, maybe they're saying this to me directly. I doubt it. But they're saying, hey, you want to put the 49ers in there? Don't forget about us. And this makes, and to me, the good thing about this is, is that this makes the Philadelphia Eagles continuously have to play, have to continue putting forth that effort because if you lose a game, the Minnesota Vikings, they're right there, even though you have the tiebreaker. But hey, let's just keep it rolling. If you're Philly, let's just keep it rolling, Bird Gang. But, the, but them Purple People leaders, boy, and Kirk Cousins again, and Patrick Peterson, shout out to the old vet who had the two interceptions on Josh Allen. So Mike, again, my takeaway from last from these past games as you thought you had it but you didn't um buffalo thought they had it the bears thought they had it um the the chargers thought they had it the cowboys thought they had it and they didn't have nothing but a motherfucking l on the horizon it's crazy football has continued to football this season and it is absolutely bananas it is I mean, can I, is anything the way that I predicted them at this point? I'd probably have to say no. Uh, to be honest, let me think about it. Who did I call to win the AFC East? I called Buffalo to win the AFC East. That Well, I mean, that's up in the air because, of course, Miami is in first place. I called the 
Colts to win the AFC South. That ain't happening. I called the Bengals to win the AFC North. That could still happen, but, I mean, the Ravens are looking strong. And I called my Broncos to win the AFC West. What a mistake for horrible choke that was. Uh. I mean, I'd have to call my own self a Dr. Dumb Shit for predicting that one. Let's see. I did call the Eagles to win the NFC East. That's looking good. I called the Vikings to win the NFC North. That's looking good. I called the Saints to win the NFC South. Dumbass. And I called the Rams to win the NFC West. Dumbass. So, yeah, I think out of out of all, <laughs> out of, all of the picks, uh, out of all the predictions that I had at the beginning of the season, right now it's just the Eagles and the Vikings who are making me look good. Now, I, I, still think, I still think ultimately Buffalo will win that division, but man, I mean, it may get dicey. Well, it's already dicey because we're now past the midway point. Buffalo has lost two straight games. Miami has won four straight games. Right now, they're headed in completely opposite direct in opposite directions. Tua should be an MVP candidate. Tyreek Hill should be an MVP candidate. And um, I called. I'm not surprised where the, I'm not surprised that the Dolphins are playing well because I had them as my sleeper team coming into the season. But their schedule was rough. I mean, their schedule was very very rough. And Miami still, Miami still has a very rough schedule to close it out. But this team's offense is so freaking explosive and so freaking unstoppable. I mean, if you if you can just protect Tua, let, let's let's get Tua to finish the game. Let's get Tua to finish the game. And the Dolphins, I think they they're all right. But they like I said, they have a tough schedule even even coming up. They have now they got the Texans. They're going on a bye week, so they go on a bye week. They can get a little healthy in first place. They play the Texans. They should win that game. Then let things then things get real. You're at San Francisco. You're at the Chargers. You're at Buffalo. You're home to Green Bay. As we find out, that's no gimme. You're at New England. You're home to the Jets. And yeah, then you're home to the Jets to finish out the season. So after this, this, this game coming up on the 27th, Thanksgiving weekend against the Texans is a must win for the Miami Dolphins because as impressive as, they, as they've been, shit gets real after that. To start off December, shit gets real because you're going to San Francisco. Then you're staying out west again for the Chargers. Then you're coming back across country to play Buffalo. And who's going to be itching for some revenge? Then you got the Packers. Then you got the Patriots. Then you finish at home against the Jets. Again, that's twice I repeated their schedule. It's going to get real. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, the Buffalo Bills. How, how about the Buffalo Bills? They're 6-3. and three. They've already had their bye week. And now you're thinking, uh-oh, like, again, you want to pencil in Josh Allen for MVP? Again, I don't know about all that, let out. Because Buffalo, what's their schedule? They play at home to Cleveland. They should win. They're at Detroit on Thanksgiving. They should win. They're at New England. And a primetime game, home to the Jets. You already lost to them. You uh, lost to the Dolphins. You're home to them. You're at Chicago. You should win. Then you got a game against Cincinnati that's going to be ha- that's going to be huge uh, on January the second, and then you have the New England Patriots to finish out your season. So again, ooh boy, this is this is getting good. This is good. The AFC East that's going to come down to the wire. I don't think the NFC East is going to come down to the wire the way people really want them to. I think people, especially Cowboys fans, and I'm not even trying to be funny. They're just trying to clamor and will their team to uh, that Christmas Eve game against Philadelphia uh, for being relevant. <clears throat> they want that Christmas Eve game to be relevant so bad. But just to be honest with you, I just think that the, the, by Christmas Eve, I think the division will be wrapped up for the Philadelphia Eagles by then. Because looking at both of your team schedule, it's definitely more favorable for the Eagles. Philly has Washington tonight. They're at the Colts now. That's no gimme now, now because if the, again the most dangerous, the most dangerous team is a team that believes. And if Jeff Saturday has them boys believing, that will be a tough game for Philly on the road. Then they're home to Green Bay. That's no gimme, as we saw yesterday, as the Packers proved to them Cowboys. <laughs> Bye, bitch. Then after that, you got the Tennessee Titans. Tennessee's never an easy game. Then you got the divisional home game, divisional road game, excuse me, against the Giants. <laughs> you see how the Giants are playing. That will be tough. Then you got at Chicago. You should win. 
But I honestly, I would I would like the Eagles to win the game against the Colts, the game against uh, the home game against the Packers, the home game against the Titans. To me, that's a dicey game against the Giants. The Giants always give them problems. And then at Chicago, they should win that game. But if you're looking at a team in Philly that could come into that uh, Christmas Eve game at 12 and one. And then you got at Dallas, home to New Orleans, home to the Giants. So, again, I think the division could, or maybe playing that game on Christmas Eve night could wrap the division up for Philly. But I don't think Dallas is going to win the division because Dallas' schedule ain't getting no easier, especially now coming off of that unexpected loss to the Green Bay Packers. Congratulations, Dallas. You got the 8-1 Vikings next week. Now, I will say this. Over the last two seasons, Dallas has walked into Minnesota and has walked out of there with victories with their backup quarterbacks. Two years ago, it was Andy Dalton. Last year, of course, it was Cooper Rush. But here's Dallas' schedule at Minnesota. Then you have to turn right back around and face the Giants on Thanksgiving. Remember, I said this last week. I said if the Giants win their next two games, that game on Thanksgiving against Dallas is going to be huge, huge, huge. Then Dallas has home against the Colts. They should win. They have home against the Texans. They should win. They're at Jacksonville. They should win. Then you got the Christmas Eve game against Philadelphia at the Titans at Washington. So, again, I just think, you know, the the AFC East is going to, to me, is going to be more down to the wire than the NFC East. Because I just gave you Dallas and Philly's schedule. The Giants have more of a say in it right now than Dallas does. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm they, The records are what the records are. The Giants are 7-2. and two, Dallas is 6-3. and three. That's why that Thanksgiving Day game is going to be so humongously huge. It is. So, again, the NFL continues to NFL. But as far as a prediction league, man, I was horrible yesterday i was absolutely horrible but we're about to get into that in just a couple of minutes but um you know i'm still a genius at work hey look play as fuck up play as fuck up too now play as fuck up but with that being said it is now time to get this prediction league monday started with these calls here and my man i got my man y'all hey he ain't no guess he right at home tony what it do bro hey what's going on man going on ain't nothing much and look let me clarify i i told tony that i'm not calling him to to pick with him about dallas losing there were some other things that i wanted to pick his brain about but before we get into that what was your takeaway about football yesterday so no hold on excuse me forgive me how are you doing my guy oh i'm all right you doing good chilling life is life i hear you hey touche but um, so what was your takeaway from yesterday's action? Uh, a lot of bad coaching. A lot of bad coaching calls yesterday. Um, uh, cost several team games. Uh, scratch your head moments. Um, yeah, I think that uh, also certain players. Um, uh, they've got these big contracts. And whether they is because they're trying to live up to these contracts or uh, simply because their ego says that they're the man, tells them that they're the man, and um, they try to do it on their own. They cost their team games yesterday. Uh, well, what players in particular are you talking about? Dak Prescott, Josh Allen, yeah, yeah. Uh. You're drinking too much of the Kool-Aid. Yeah, well, I mean, well, look, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Like I said, or I said this on the show earlier. I had pretty much given up on that Packers Cowboys game. I really did. When it was twenty-eight to fourteen, I really stopped paying attention to it. And then I looked at my homeboy Eddie's post on Facebook, <clears throat> saying he was saying how much he hates Aaron Rodgers and losing to the Packers. I was like, wait, y'all lost? And I went back and looked at it. And I was like, I'll be damned. But <clears throat> that Buffalo Minnesota game was crazy. Yeah, I think you, you, you know why I say that, because uh, a lot of um, people in, in Cowboys Nation point toward Kellen Moore and the play call. If, you, if you're running the ball five yards a clip they're, and you're up 14, there literally is no reason why your quarterback should be throwing that much. But what people did not see game inside the game, the Supreme Prescott likes to come up to the line and check out of run plays. 
You understand? He likes the audible. He likes to change the play. He likes the audible. And that's where that came from. And that's what I mean with these quarterbacks. You just run the play, son. Just run the play. We was having success running the ball. You run the ball. You milk the clock. You know, you can do it, you, third and four. You can run the ball if you run in five yard a clip. Um, but they just they can have they just I'm, we just gonna throw. Well, you're playing right in the Green Bay's hands. You're playing in any team's hands, really, especially if they're able to run the ball, which Green Bay was running it down our throat. Yeah, that's that. You know, and what to be honest with you, what I've been hearing all morning is something, and actually. All last night, once I started uh, watching some, you know, some sports talk, it's something that actually I thought we already knew. They were, I was hearing, you know, has did did, did Green Bay expose Dallas's defense? I'm like, well, no, because Philadelphia showed on the Sunday night game that they have problems stopping the run. It's just that you hadn't seen it implemented. The war team wasn't able to implement it because that's one reason why I stopped watching the game. I was like. Well, Dallas is up 20, 28 to 14. They're run that both teams are running the ball down each other's throat, but Dallas is up two touchdowns, so they'll have the advantage of, of you know they'll keep on doing it. Then I saw that dude Christian Watts, and I started hearing I started seeing what all the hype was about. Cause that motherfucker took off. <laughs> like, yeah. like Yeah, that dude took off. I was like, Well, damn. But no, I don't disagree because yeah, if Tony Pollard's they averaging were, five yards a carry. What are you What are you throwing out, it so much for? They were selling out to stop the run, and up twenty eight fourteen. You know, Green Bay stuck with the game plan. They stuck with they did. the ball. They did. You know, we did not. You know, I don't know why. Like whether it's Dak audible and out or a combination of Kellen Moore. I know they throw happy, but come on, Mike McCarthy. You know, I mean, run the ball. If you can run it, run it. Well, uh, averaging five uh, yards a carry would suggest that you can run the ball. Minnesota, same thing. Same thing. The Bills don't have a great running game, but why? Why are you just flinging the ball? Like, and, and Minnesota is effectively running the ball, and every third down, every third down, there's Justin Jefferson. There's Justin Jefferson. So, wh- okay, where would you rank that Justin Jefferson catch yesterday? Because that was bananas. Yeah. It, it's I arguably catch of the year so far. Oh, I think most definitely because with one hand, you literally snatched it away from a defender who had two hands on it. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, because they were comparing that to Odell's catch eight years ago, the stakes were higher with Justin Jefferson's catch by a lot. I mean, if they don't, if he doesn't make that catch, they lose the game. Right. Yeah. Which, which, you know, I mean, again, some aspects of the Bills have been exposed. I still think that they're arguably the best in the AFC, but they get a, they need to tighten up because they're being exposed. Either as either the Bills aren't that, uh, as good as we thought they were, or maybe Minnesota's better. I was getting ready to okay. ask that question because I asked it facetious. I asked it uh, facetiously <clears throat> earlier when I was doing my review. Have we oversold the Bills or have we undersold the Vikings? I, I'm thinking it's towards it's underselling the Vikings. I think so too. Yeah, if Cook is healthy, then they can run the ball, and if they can run the ball, then then, then you're taking the ball kind of out of Cousins' hands. Um, other than you know, um, you, you're, you're limiting his throws, which means he's more effective. He's a he's a really really good bus driver. But over the last two weeks, we've seen something from Kirk Cousins that we didn't see in the past. We saw him lead team, lead his team to fourth quarter comebacks where, you know, in the past, and I mean very recent past, all the way up to last year, you know, when they were down 10 points in the fourth quarter late against Washington, you would have chalked that up for an L for Minnesota. They were down 27 to 10 yesterday. You would have chalked that up for an L in the past. So I got to give him credit too. Right, yeah. I mean, eight and one. Like, no, it's like it's crazy because nobody wants to believe in the Vikings. Nobody wants to believe in the Giants, but they're eight and one and seven and two. It's like, what they 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 keep winning games. They're they're playing the teams that are on their schedule. They're beating the teams that are on their schedule. What else do you want them to do? Yeah, I um, I, I got a I got a uh, off off topic in an AFC uh, prediction though. Okay. I think that um, 
Derek Carr has played his last year at a, as a Raider. Oh, wasn't that pathetic yesterday? It, it was, and I, and I don't put it on him. I, I did. You see his his post game? Yes. Yeah. You want to be and crying I, and shit? And he stopped short of calling names, but he's talking about Waller. He's talking about Renfro. You know, yeah, the it, guys who are never available. Yep. <laughs> yep. The guys, Darren Waller never plays anymore. He don't play. He's like the Kawhi Leonard of football. He don't play no more. It's rare when he suits up. So, I mean. You know, his frustration, but but this is a, this draft, upcoming draft, it, it got some quarterbacks at the top. And at the very least, um, with that pick, because they got quarterbacks at the top, the Raiders can reload and get a boatload of players for that, that, that pick. I tell you what, though, they let go of Derek Carr. Devontae's going to demand to be traded. I guarantee it. I, honestly, I would do it. I would try to trade Carr and Devontae Adams if I could. Okay, because you know that's gonna that's the that's the sole reason why Devontae uh, wanted to go to Vegas. And this is and this is not a knock on Carr, and it's not a knock on Devontae. I just think that 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 they need to just the Raiders just probably need to just blow it up. Um, and and McDaniel's is not a good head coach. With, yeah, McDaniel's is not a good head coach. Some 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 offense some coordinators are not meant to be coaches, head coaches. You know, like um, Josh McDaniels is not a good head coach. He's a better offensive coordinator. I mean, it's no shame in that. Right. It's no shame in that. Like, I believe Matt Patricia is probably a better defensive coordinator than a head coach. You know, you know it's, it's no shame in it. Because, you know, what? This is – he last his last head coaching job was with Denver in 2010. You know, now you've gotten a dozen years under your belt, won you some more Super Bowls as an offensive coordinator, and you go back to being a head coach and you're trash again. It's clear you're not a good head coach. <laughs> like that's I mean, that's it. It's that's just not you, you know, your your football life, you 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 were destined in football circles to work under Belichick. And there's no shame in that. Yeah, I agree. Now, as far as the prediction league, I had a horrible day. I had a terrible day. This was my worst day of the season. Uh, yesterday, I only got four right. If Philly wins tonight, that will be five. Uh, my cousin David won the week. Calvin came in second. David won the week because Calvin and David both uh, picked Philly to win tonight. Um, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six. You got six right. Like, nobody had a... Nobody had a super awesome day that would really gain any ground on me. But yesterday, I was the worst. Like, I was horrible yesterday. You got six right. Uh, you have Washington winning tonight, which I think that pick was just pure hatred of the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, I hate the commanders, too, but, you know, it is a, it's a division game. So, you know, and Washington has done that before. Well, with y'all losing, if y'all had any aspiration of the division, you need Washington to win tonight. Yeah, but I'm I'm making picks. I'm not, you know, I'm not picking based on playoff positioning and this and the other. I'm just making a pick week to week. And, I mean, Washington has done this before, so there's no reason for me to believe that they couldn't do it, you know, especially because they're riding. Uh, Heineke is a wild card, bro. Heineke needs to be their full, he needs to be their permanent starter. Because he plays playground football, yep. and with that, it's kind of hard to, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's not a coincidence that as soon as as soon as he starts playing and Carson Wentz stops playing, they start winning. That's not a coincidence. Yeah, so you know, it's not inconceivable. They've been on a roll, and that that randomness with Heineke, you know, who knows? Well, before we get on to other topics, sir, let me get your picks for next week. You'll be first up to do your uh, predictions. Thursday night football, Tennessee at Green Bay. You see, you just, God, I, look, I know Tennessee beat my Broncos. Let me just quickly go off topic. I made my, I've made my case to fire Nathaniel Hackett. We were just coming off of a bye week, and we looked that fucking pathetic. Off of a bye week. Ditto, ditto. We came, on, we came off a bye. But, y'all, but at least y'all put up 28 points. Y'all, yeah, but, but y'all offense been struggling all season. So. Yeah, but I'm saying, but you come off of a bye week. Good, good God. 
the bye wasn't all of a sudden going to make y'all have a potent offense. So, well, I mean, but at least look a little better. Gee whiz, we were coming off of a bye. We were coming off of a win. I mean, at least, at least y'all put, look, I'll take y'all offense any day. And they saying y'all offense is struggling for the most part this year. I'll take y'all offense over mine any day. <laughs> I'm being real with you. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but okay. Tennessee versus Green Bay. Tw- Tennessee at Green Bay. Thursday night football. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know what? As crazy as it sounds, I'm going to take the tight. That doesn't, that doesn't sound crazy. Because they're going to stick with their game plan and they're going to run the ball. Yeah, that doesn't sound crazy. Okay, well, Chicago. Yeah. And Tennessee is used to playing in that, on that natural grass or out in the cold. So, yeah, I'll take Tennessee. Yeah, like, that's that's not a crazy pick at all. Um, it says you you know that guy who I don't trust. You know him. Oh yeah, um, um, um uh, Ryan Tannehill, not Matt Ryan Tannehill. Oh, yeah. Well, no, yeah, Tannehill, Ryan Tannehill. Oh yeah, Ryan, yeah, Ryan Tannehill, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, Chicago at Atlanta. Uh, Bears got momentum. They lost and yesterday. It's stepped down, so I'm 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 gonna go with the Bears. But they lost yesterday. I'm gonna go with the Bears. The okay. Bears have momentum, bro. They they lost. They lost because they're an inferior team. But the Bears got momentum. They lost to the worst team know. yesterday. But I, I hear you. I hear you. Could no Justin Fields has been balling. He has been right. balling. And the Bears actually did the right thing by clearing out their best defensive players for picks because they could, they're they're going to be scary in the next two years. Um, they're in the Bears. Cleveland at Buffalo. Buffalo. Philly at Indianapolis. Uh, I'll take Philly in that one. I'm shocked. <laughs> again, I, again, I, I certain ones. I'm just gonna take the other team. Other ones, it's just you know common sense. There's no point in just losing a pick just because I hate the Eagles. You know. Well, I, I don't disagree with that, but this is... Let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that, because that's inaccurate. I don't hate any NFL team. So, uh, just picking against them just to pick against them, I don't necessarily do that all the time. Well, I don't disagree with you, and I will probably pick... I will pick Philadelphia to win that game, too. But the most dangerous team is the team that believes in him. Jeff Saturday, and you see Matt Ryan came. You see Matt Ryan is back. You see how quickly that changed as soon as Jeff, as soon as Jeff Saturday became the coach. Yeah. The most dangerous team is a team that believes. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh the New York Jets at the New at the New England Patriots. I'm gonna take the Jets. Okay. That's no longer a gimme game for the A. Nope. So, nope. Not at all. D, I think, can get after them. The Rams at the Saints. Two teams that have just been horrible this season. <laughs> I'm gonna take the Rams. I don't know who I want to take for that game. To tell you the truth, both of them suck ass. Um, Detroit at the New York Giants. I'm gonna take the Lions. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> oh, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. And the only reason why I said I knew it because I'm thinking about taking the Lions. Serious. This just seems like that type of game that the Giants would lose, even though it's at home. I don't know. I haven't made my pick yet, but it doesn't surprise me that you're taking Detroit. It doesn't. The Lions have won two straight. They're on a winning streak. They got momentum. They're on a roll. The fighting Dan Campbells. Ain't that a bitch? Um, (laughs) Carolina at Baltimore. (laughs) Uh, Baltimore. Yeah, they 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 are they are the AFC team that you may really want to look out for, because now their defense has started to come together. Washington at Houston. Oh, uh, ooh. Um, I'm gonna take the Commanders. So, if your predictions are correct, sir. You got the commanders going on a nice little run here. I'm just saying. Again, Heineke being that random. You've seen there's nothing random about Davis Mills. Heineke is random. Them dudes, for whatever reason, rally around that dude. 
Yes, they do. And he's a guy, he finds McLaurin. Like, he finds him. Yes, so, he does. You know, I, 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 I'll take the commanders. The two most disappointing teams to me in the AFC, the Raiders at the Broncos. <laughs> I'm going to take Derek Carr and his emotional cry face. <laughs> okay, hey, I don't blame you. Dallas at Minnesota. Yeah, I'm sticking with my boys. I'm sticking with my boys. Hopefully, Kellen Moore gets sick and, you know, McCarthy calls the players or something. But, yeah, I'm sticking with my boys. Kansas City at the Los Angeles Chargers. Chargers in that one. At the Chargers, I'll take the Chargers. You know, the Chargers are the most Jekyll and Hyde team in the world. I swear. Yeah, they are. Sunday night football, Cincinnati at Pittsburgh. Ooh. At Pittsburgh. Um, I'm going to take the Steelers at home. Okay. And Monday night football, San Francisco at Arizona. 49 I don't know if you've been listening to the podcast the last couple of weeks. I think the 49ers are about to roll. Yeah, they got some momentum, too. And they got players coming back. During this bye week that they just had, they got uh, like 11 players back. Yes, I I got the 49ers. I've I've made my early prediction for the NFC Championship game. I think it's going to be Philly and San Francisco. You may agree to disagree, but I think San Francisco is going to roll. Seattle's been a nice story, and I wish they had a one yesterday. But them forty, them damn forty ers now adding McCaffrey, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw Odell Beckham go to the forty ers Yeah, well, that's why I was actually gonna touch on that. We got uh, Tyron Smith should be coming back in a couple weeks, but James Washington finally will hit the, the field, uh, so we stop playing our fourth and fifth wide receivers out there. But um, but I, I do think that the Odell talk got a lot of legs. Um, yeah, I've, I've heard about that too. I've heard about that too. And and being as though certain people are lobbying for him, uh, uh, players, current players, and former players, but more importantly, his family is lobbying for him because uh, all his family is from there. What Texas? Yeah, yeah, it's his father's side of family. Every last one of them is Cowboys, and they in Texas. So yeah. Okay. Well, again, I would not be surprised to see him don the 49ers jersey. But that we'll see. Down to money because at the end of the day, he's already put out. His agents already put out. He wants a multi-year deal. Yes, he yes he wants a multi-year deal. Deal. And San Francisco actually has the money. The 49ers have the money. It, it it that's what it comes down to. It's gonna come down to the money. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, before I get to election talk, uh. I, I never got your opinion on this Kyrie Irving situation. What, what do you think about that? Now, he was supposed to come back yesterday against the Los Angeles Lakers. That was supposed to be um, the end of his five-game suspension, a game which, by the grace of God, the Lakers actually found a way to win a game. But um, what do you think of that situation? Well, what I think is players are entitled to their personal opinions um, about things, but they choose the wrong venues to exercise these things. Um, had Kyrie done that in a different context and a different venue, there would have been no suspension. There would have been no, I mean, people would have admonished him, but there would be no reprimand attached to it. Uh, there would be no punishment attached to it because, again, you're entitled to your freedom of speech and your freedom of point of view. Now, uh, the, the thing that's in question, I mean, I agree with, with Kyrie. I agree, you know, that. Anybody Jewish that starts talking, I immediately say, you're not the original Jews. You know, we know who the original Jews are. Right. Um, so, yeah, if you call that anti-Semitic, then so be it. But whatever. Um, but I just think that for the dude, for what the dude brings, you understand, for what he brings, he's not worth the trouble. He's not worth the headache. I, I, I would have been trying to jet, jettison him. I would have been trying to jettison him over the COVID stuff. For real, for real. Um, I, I think Kyrie Irving is kind of like the Ricky Williams of the of the NBA. You know, I don't think that dude loves the game. He plays, it makes him money, but I don't think he actually loves playing the game anymore. And 
Hey, hey, if I'm the next man, I try to find any way possible to just move that dude. Get him, because he's a cancer. At this point, you'd have to label him a cancer. Um, that That's kind of what I feel, right? I mean, I've never had a great love for Kyrie, but, uh, and I don't, again, I don't have a problem uh, with athletes, pro athletes exercising their rights as a citizen uh, of freedom of speech, but come on, man. It's just certain things. Your PR people need to be in your ear saying, your agent need to be in your ear saying, this is not a good look. This is just not a good look. So it's telling, I think, that um, LeBron, you know, asked LeBron about it, and LeBron kind of stayed neutral with that. Um, not because of the relationship with him and Kyrie, but because it is one of those subjects, man, that, that your ass can be on the record as an NBA player. You're not asking the man, you know, LeBron James, because no matter what, they're going to attach it to, to to your professional career. So, um, like I said, I just think for what Kyrie brings, um, just in general, I, I would have been tried to jettison that dude. Um, said let, let him be somebody else's headache. I don't disagree with what you're saying as far as, you know, um, him being more, you know, trouble than he's worth. Because I don't think that he should have made, to me, I wouldn't have made the post because I'm. he knew that it would bring a negative attention to himself. I would think that he would know that at least. Um, but what I do have a problem with is the hoops that they're trying to get him to jump through to for him to come back and play. If you set a five game suspension, huh? I have no issue with it. I have no issue. I do. Position. He put himself in a position to be a dog and pony show. Well, the reason why I have a problem with it is because it's like you're trying to publicly castrate him the way the Celtics are trying to do Ime Udoka. And I'm starting to see that as a trend when it comes to black dudes. Different situation. Different situation. I get that. But I, like I said, this is just my opinion. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have put out the post. Me, per I would have never done it. I thought that was dumb. But if he did everything you asked him to do, paid five hundred thousand or whatever charity, anti-Semitic charity, apologize and all that other stuff, now you're just being excessive. And this is why everybody's tone has started to change on it because now the players are starting to step up and say, "All right, you know, he did what you asked him to do. Now you're just being extra." That's also what LeBron James said. He stayed neutral, but he said it's it, the, the punishment is getting ridiculous now. You know, he, he did what he was supposed to do. Let that man play. Okay, so, no, I don't agree with what he did. But if you're going to, don't don't keep moving the goalposts back on the punishment. If you're going to, if you're going to, this, if you're going to give disciplinary action, give it and stick with it. Don't start tacking on stuff because now you're being, now you're just, you're doing too much. You're being extra. And I don't believe that this same punishment would apply to certain other individuals. I do agree Kyrie is, 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 is is not worth the headache that he comes with but in this specific situation i don't like the the tack ons with the disciplinary action you told him to do something he did it now you want him to do this that no 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 to me that's 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 extra that's doing too much that's doing too much i mean for all of that then get rid of him get rid of him cut him cut him if they if they just flat out cut ties with him i wouldn't care i wouldn't have a problem with that but doing all of the extra acts at uh, the all the the extra shit to try to prove a point for all of that just get rid of him i mean if he's if he's a cancer like i don't like you said you think he's a cancer to that locker room then get rid of him don't make him do all of this other shit and then have him back on the team where it's going to draw more attention do you agree with that again i i think um i think it's, this is a culmination of things i, I don't i don't i don't think that it's just this particular thing, I think, I think it's the culmination of things with Kyrie. But again, if it's a culmination of things, then get rid of him. Then yeah, just cut I him. Kyrie is still an NBA asset, and um, yeah, you could, you could, you could drop him. But again, you, you I, I think, I think if they could, could actually find a trade market for him, you they won't. Would. You won't, and you know that. You especially not. Maybe before this post, maybe. Now you won't. You know you're not. So if he's that much of a problem, then send him home. Here is the, the problem, too, is Kevin Durant. 
Well, hey. That's, that's kind of a problem too. Well, hey, hey, you know what? Hey, you know what you signed up for in 2019. So I don't feel sorry for the Nets in that regard, and I'm happy that they stood their ground and didn't trade Kevin Durant. And they still don't have to trade him after this season. But Kyrie ass is gone because it's his final year. And you don't, Kevin Kevin Durant can fuss, cuss, and bitch all he want to when this offseason is over with, but they don't have to trade him. And he knows that. Because remember, it was a foregone conclusion when Kevin Durant said, I want to be traded. And everybody come out and said, you have to trade him. No, you don't. Me and you were sitting there saying that all summer. No, you don't. So whatever Kevin Durant's problem is, that's a Kevin Durant problem. That's not an organizational problem. Yeah. Well, I, I think that it, it, these people are weighing in, for instance, like LeBron weighing in on this, this mention being excessive and all this other work. Kyrie met with the owner and he been silent really since then. So whatever they talk about, maybe they discuss him not returning on the road. Who knows? met with Adam Silver too and Adam Silver vouched for him I mean again he met with these people but he's been silent so you know in, in terms of whether things are excessive and this and we don't really know what they discuss he, he, he may they may have discussed him not returning on the road because they didn't want that you know on top of you you the rival team anyway but you got that extra too so you know who knows but my point is he hasn't said anything, so I mean, the step-by-step -step thing process that they have for him to be reinstated, he's fulfilled that, but um, he, you know, he was supposed to come back, what, against y'all? Yeah, they were supposed to come back last night. But, but, that, but that's what I'm saying. That's they could have used him last oh. night, too, and the Lakers won. Hey, hey! I'm sorry. <laughs> At this point, no one knows, you know, why uh, he didn't. Well, I just wanted to pick your brain on that. And, um, I mean, I, I don't think that he ha I don't think he has any trade value. Maybe LeBron might try to push for him to be a Laker next year when he's a free agent and you can outright sign him. Who knows? I'm not worried about next season until next season gets here. The only thing I'll say about basketball right now is hey, Cleveland Cavaliers look like they're gelling, bro. <laughs> like, that, 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 was a that was a question that you had, right? The Cleveland Cavaliers look like they gelling. Yeah. They looking pretty good. <laughs> they looking pretty damn good. And, um, again, it's still too early for me, even though Embiid went crazy last night, having 59 points in 36 minutes. That's bananas. Yeah. But, I mean, but, yeah, they're it, 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 it gelling. Now, I, now, as far as Election Day, I was totally ignorant to everything that was going on inform me sir uh trump killed him. trump killed the republicans not well I, all the well, only thing i do know is that desantis won in florida right because they gerrymandered the maps desantis um the the republicans gerrymandered the maps in in florida this past year to add three to add extra congressional seats and um, there, there's a trend that's been going on, particularly in Florida, uh, with Latinos, but the Cubans, the Cubans who, who, who identify more with being Caucasian than anything else. It's that Ricky Ricardo effect, genera generationally. Um, so that's the reason why Florida was Flor Florida. But beyond Florida, you know, Trump cost the Republicans. His, and him putting himself in the middle of this election race, people said, yeah, a lot of them moderate Republicans said, oh, hell no, I'd rather vote for the Democrats. And that's exactly what happened. Um, you see certain aspects of the Republican Party distancing, distancing themselves from Trump ahead of what he's supposed to announce tomorrow that he's going to run. Um, it won't stop any investigations. They'll continue the investigations and they'll indict him, regardless of whether he's running for president. But the point is that the moderate Republicans uh, kind of shifted away. They're shifting away from the MAGA Republicans because the MAGA, well, the MAGA people, they don't even call themselves Republicans. That's what's happening. They view themselves as a whole separate party, and they refer to the actual Republicans as rhinos. So they're trying to hijack it, and a lot of the moderate Republicans are, I'm not supporting that. So I'd rather vote for the Democrat until we can get rid of the Trump stench completely. 
And that's exactly why the Democrats held the Senate. And that's why the House is even still up in the air. If the Republicans do win it, it's only going to be by a handful of seats. So they really won't be able to, they'll be able to do their little BS investigations of Joe Biden and Hunter Biden and all that. But they Republicans won't really be able to do anything but just stand in the way of, um, of the Democrats. And they'll do that for two years, just stand in the way. But, but I'm telling you, low key, they're hoping that DeSantis does run. That way they can get rid of Trump. And you'll see DeSantis shift from Trumpy to sort of kind of moderate, you know, uh, once he actually gets in. For all intents and purposes, now I listen to Dan Lebertard on a weekly basis. From all intents and purposes, I've heard DeSantis is kind of worse than Trump. Well, no, no. <laughs> DeSantis is worse than Trump because he's intelligent. Trump is not. <laughs> like, but, 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 but people don't realize, if you listen to go and look at and listen to Don DeSantis before the era of Trump, he was a Republican. He was a little right, but mostly this act and I call it an act, has been trying to steal Trump voters. Ah, okay. Trying to be as Trump-like as he can. Right. And to steal. That's what, the, that's what a lot of these Republicans who lost in these midterms did. They tried to be as Trumpy as they could to get the Trump voters, and then they, they intended on shifting back to that middle where they originally were once they won, once they got them votes. Well, the problem with that, that was a, that was a, bad, a bad strategy. The Republicans who won are the middle of the road Republicans. Okay. Okay. The ones who lost are all election deniers, are all Trump people. The only ones that actually won are like J.D. Vance, but he, but even he flip-flopped. Because if you look at just two uh, two years ago, some of his videos regarding Trump, and he, he had a whole bunch of negative stuff to, to say about Trump, but because he won, in, in that, won that election, he kissed the ring to get endorsement from Trump. Do you understand? So that that's what it's all about. It's a game that they're playing, but the moderate Republicans are the key. The fact that the Democrats, they do the, you know, early vote and all that. And uh, also the fact that um, these moderate Republicans, they're, they're tired of, the main GOP people, they're tired of Trump. And so that, the Republicans, they can gerrymander all the maps they want. They can't afford to lose any, any, you know, kind of Republican vote. And they did. It's okay. like when you look at Herschel Walker and... and, and yeah, what was that about? Let, let's be clear on something. It's still going on. I mean, they're going to a runoff, so the election for them will be December 6th. But Warnock will win. But why are they backing... Uh, why are those people backing Herschel Walker? Because he's a good boy. <laughs> yeah, Herschel Walker says some of the most nonsensical, idiotic, embarrassing, I'm embarrassed to be black type stuff I've ever heard out of my mouth. Did you hear that pastor in Georgia that just raked him through the coals? Exactly. Oh my goodness. They will vote for Herschel Walker because he represents that good boy Uncle Ruckus figure. <laughs> Damn. Look at all his baby mama. Look at these women that's coming out saying he paid for abortion. They all white women. They remind me of, of the scene from Blazing Saddles. Herschel sitting there talking about where the white women at? <laughs> so... You know that's why that's why Herschel was in it. They figured they figured we got to get a we got to get a nigger to beat a nigger. <laughs> oh my god! I didn't even know Herschel Walker was running for public office, and I was like, huh? Then I heard that pastor at that church in Atlanta just dog him. I was like, this ain't this ain't Jesus like. But I was I was listening to what he was saying. I was like, Greg, they, they are coming for Herschel Walker. And I already damn near won. Herschel Walker sound like uh, Dumb Donald from from uh, uh, Fat Albert. <laughs> no, no, uh, not Dumb Donald. <laughs> he sound like Dumb Donald. But, but <laughs> again, they will vote for him. Why? Because he's Trump oriented. Trump endorsed him the whole way with the, the main GOP Republican. Mitch McConnell and them said, why? Why would you endorse it? Why would you push this dude? He can't barely talk. <laughs> he, he holding guns to his wife head and, you know, threatening to blow her brains out and all kinds of crazy mess. And, and even his gay son, who is a Republican, conservative Republican, been slaying him. Been slaying him. Walker has him. a gay son? Yeah, yep. 
Yep, and been slaying the crap out of him, and and but they pushed him because we gotta have the nigger to be the nigger. <laughs> he's a good boy. That Herschel, he's a good boy. Good and old boy from Georgia. Good. It ain't nothing but a sea of white. Let me find now. Herschel Walker ain't another Clarence Thomas, is he? Yes, he is. Damn it! And damn it! Yes, he is. Damn it! Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Ah, damn it! Herschel Walk, I played with you for years on Tecmo Bowl, damn you. Oh, uh, Herschel been that for years. You think, I'm going to tell you something. O- OJ got a bad rap about being white-oriented. I see. Once he, once he forgot he was black. But if you listen to a lot of, you can pull Herschel, I mean, pull up uh, OJ's Twitter and listen to OJ. Oh, OJ speak that real shit now. And OJ knows he's a black man. Oh, yeah, OJ. Hey, listen, that, I don't get on Twitter much, but anytime I see OJ Simpson post, I listen because OJ speak that real shit. He does. Yep. Meanwhile, Herschel Walker, same, same position, played the same position. Same position. Uh, uh, same position. Clearly, he got CTE where, where OJ Something. didn't. But, but, but <laughs> he, he coming on there and he, you know, sounded like Uncle Ruckus. The white man is just a joy to be around. It smell like lemon flavor. <laughs> <You know. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Damn! Yeah, oh, Steven from yeah. Django head ass. We got Damn it! To send it back. These niggas, these baboons, is running wild. Damn! Come on, Herschel. Uh, uh, don't be Steven from Django. Just go do another Heisman Any Trophy kind of commercial. People, I, I'm just gonna say it, and your and your listeners may dissent from this, but those kind of people, him and the Kanyes and Clarence Thomases and the. The uh, uh, Ben Carsons and the can- especially Rat Face, uh, Bed Winch, Candace Owens. Oh my God! Oh my goodness! All them people, you need to take them behind the woodshed <laughs> because they're not doing us any good. None. I saw Candace Owens and Kanye with that White Lives Matter shirt. I was like, Oh my God! I was like, Oh no, 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 no. And I'm not. Listen, I said this earlier today when I first started the show because I was. You know, uh, looking at information on the shootings that just happened at UVA uh, last night, uh, where th- right. where three football players they were caught killed. him. By the way, hmm? they caught him. By I know way. they caught him. I know, yeah, and he was a former player. Um, I was just saying, like, I'm not gonna get on here because it was three black guys who were killed and scream "Black Lives Matter." No, I'm all lives matter. To me, all lives matter. Particularly, this is when I get hard on Black Lives Matter because, like, Black lives have to start mattering to Black people first. Okay, I'll su- I support the cause, but Black lives have to matter to Black people. But when I see Kanye West and Candace Owens doing that shit, like, come on, man, come on, man, like, come on, like, really, like, come on, man. Like, Can- Candace Owens is a trip. I mean, goodness gracious. Yeah. You talking about a chick who hates the reflection she sees in the mirror every day? Well, well, you know, she's a sellout because she wasn't always that. If you look at old videos of her, she was a Democrat. And I know. She was doing a similar thing, I guess, on the Democrat side. But then something happened. I guess the opportunity, the opportunity wasn't there for her to make that money. So she pulled a, uh, she pulled a, um, I'm Omarosa. Um, and decided to try to, you know, throw, get in bed and literally got in bed with uh, the Republican Party. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very literally. Very much so. And so, I mean, that's who she is. Um, but behind the woodshed, you know, is where she belongs because she is not doing us any good. She she literally is hurting us. any cause that we have. She's hurting it. It's a damn shame, too. It is. It's a damn shame. But th- I wanted to pick your brain on election day and Kyrie Irving. Now, before we, uh, before we, uh, um, before we get off the line, I'm gonna uh, read to your picks again to make sure we have everything straight. Tennessee over Green Bay, Chicago over Atlanta, Buffalo over Cleveland, Philly over Indianapolis, the Jets over the Patriots, the Rams over the Saints, the Lions over the Giants. Upset special. The Ravens over the Panthers. Uh, Washington, I was about to say the Redskins, the Commanders over the Texans, the Raiders over the Broncos, Dallas over Minnesota, Chargers over the Chiefs, upset special, Pittsburgh over Cincinnati, and San Francisco over Arizona. Sound about right, sir? That sounds about right. All right, sir. Hey, listen, man, I'm probably going to hit you up when we off wax just to give you an update on what's been going on with me over the past few weeks, sir. 
but how's everything going on the home front, bro? Uh, it's all right. It's all right? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool beans. Oh, oh, oh. Um, my homeboy wanna uh want want you to uh uh want one of them things, one of them FSs. So I may come holler at you on Sunday. Okay. All right, same same thing. He want the exact same thing. Okay. All right, so yeah, I'll hit you up when we off wax. All right. All right, homie. Gone. Gone. My man, Tony. Let's see, I ain't talked to him in a minute. Listen, I wasn't calling to, to troll him about the Cowboys. I'll do that enough as the show goes along. And the show is going along to the next caller, which is Calvin. What's up, bro? What's up, man? I was hoping I ain't hear from you. See, he wants to come on the show and immediately be an asshole. <laughs> and why do you not want to hear from me? So the last time we won, when you ain't called. Well, the sun shines on a dog's ass every now and again. Yeah. So everybody gets lucky. Yeah. I mean, hell, even on Halloween, my Broncos won, and then we came back to reality. But how you living, brother? I'm all right. You good? No work today? Yeah, I'm on break. Oh, okay, good. I caught you perfect timing. So what, sir, was, what was your takeaway from the um, from the games yesterday? Um, yeah, I... I enjoyed it for real. I, I'm glad. I, I'm glad we did what we had to do. It looked like we finally. I don't know. I ain't gonna say finally, but it looked like whatever was missing kind of peeked his head out for a little bit. But we'll see. Yeah, that was a Julio Jones sighting. Yeah, man, he looked. He, he looked real good. He even looked good on the interception when he went inside for dude. Like, oh, look at that man. Maybe <laughs> he just needed. Maybe you know what I'm saying. Shit like that sometimes. Maybe he just needed to get like just. I, I told myself that maybe he just needed to run with the ball, like just open up. You know what I'm saying? Get his body right. I don't know. He's looking high. Scotty Miller's he's jumping for no reason. I don't know what the. And then I was and and then the shit was going good. They fucking tried to throw Tom Brady a pass. Man, bro. I couldn't do nothing but laugh. Like, damn, man, we lost. <laughs> bro, I'm gonna tell you what. If Geno Smith had one more possession. Yeah. <laughs> but if it was a fifth, we all be drunk. You ain't lying. And I stayed drunk. No, let me shut up. And, and we was on. Then, I, then they fucking on. I went. I fucked around it because I couldn't find that shit. So I tried to pull a rabbit out of the hat. Try to see who who account I could use to watch the shit because I ain't got the Hulu shit no more. That shit was just too much. So I fucked around and got the the little shit on the phone. The little. NFL plus shit, and I was, I was at the laundromat, and that fucking Buffalo, that Minnesota game was sweet. That shit was crazy as a bitch, wasn't it? Yeah, two of the games, like at least two of the games that I picked to win for that week, they they, they came down to the wire. That jump and the Dallas jump. Yes, yes, yes. I was just getting ready to say, as far as the week goes in predictions, you came in second place to David. Me, I had a horrible week. This was my worst week of the season, bro. I had a terrible week. Like, y'all dusted my ass this week. But, yes, you you, you picked Green Bay. Um, it was actually you and Marquise were the only ones that picked Green Bay. But, yeah, that Minnesota game, you and David were the only ones that picked Minnesota. Yeah. And that game was bananas. So let me ask you something. Have we oversold the Bills or have we under have we uh slept on the Vikings? Well I picked I picked the, uh, the reason why I picked Minnesota is because Jonathan Allen won't write. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. he's dealing he's dealing with some in his elbow. But I couldn't tell when it was twenty seven to ten Buffalo. Yeah, but I that's why I picked them. So to answer your question on um, they just two really good teams. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't be like, it's we are people. And even like on ESPN and them shit, like when two really good teams win, they, they, they always, they always discuss the game as if somebody won't go lose. You know what I'm saying? Like two really good teams played and they went down to the last fucking score. So no, you ain't undershoot or overshoot nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, well, the game could have been a tie. They, they can think people might have under under think if anything, the 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 bills are not overrated. It's just the 
Vikings may be underrated. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, and that's what I think. I think yeah. we may have underrated the Vikings. Like I was, yeah, because I was watching the game with Kirk Cousins. He was, he was like, if you could just look, not to sound like poetic, but if you just look at his face and how he was playing, it was like he had tapped in some shit. He ain't never, He was giving his all, Jack. That's yeah. Playing. That man was playing. But now you think about Buffalo. Like, Buffalo loses that game, and they lose first place in their division. Because now Miami's in first place. What do you think? Of the motherfucking Dolphins, that Dolphins offense is amazing. It is, but like I said, we talked about this shit weeks ago. When we were talking about everybody looks the same, and it looks like those teams like that, like Miami, to me, Miami and Philly, and you know what I'm saying, and, and fucking Arizona, you know what I'm saying, that's that, that, just... It's, we look. I, I could. I consider it kind of like the wildcat. Not not like the wildcat what they do, but kind of like it's a it's a it's a type of scheme. You know what I'm saying? Or the RPO is type of scheme that is taking the is taking everybody else from time to justice. Well, I mean, no. It, see, it, it really well the run pass option. That's not brand new. But what's gotten brand new is just the way that these wide receivers are now after the ball and their catching ability. What did you yeah, think of that Justin Jefferson catch? Man, <laughs> just the time we living in there, that shit was sweet. Both of them, that, both those catches there. I mean, it's just the, it's just the time we living at, living in. Yeah, Stephon, I'm not going to try, try to poo-poo on Stephon Diggs' catch because his catch was yeah. dope too. But given the yeah. circumstances of Jefferson's catch, that was crazy. That was, that was what I'm saying. Oh, and another thing. It seems like your boy Mike McCarthy, he's back on his own. That ain't my boy. Man. Fuck them niggas. <laughs> he's back on the same shit. Like, what is it with this? He got. It's like he he don't have situational football down to. He don't. It's like he don't get it. Look, look. I just got off the phone with with Tony, aka the skip. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I told him I didn't bring him on the phone to tease him about the victory. I really wanted to talk about election day and Kyrie Irving more so. But we got into football, but. I ain't because him, I mean, fuck, that, that may, look, the fact that my Broncos lost, looking like shit again, even after a bye week, I wish we fired as coach, but what Dallas losing brought me so much joy, and it just made me so happy. Man, when he threw that motherfucking headset. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to see the hype about Christian Watson now, though. Yeah. That little, that little yellow motherfucker went off. But he not, he not, he not that loose, I'm calling it. No, he's not little. No, he's six for yeah. four. He's six four. He's a rather big dude for a receiver. Yeah. But he went off. Yeah. yeah, man. But I ain't I ain't, I ain't really say nothing. Well, I ain't really say nothing because I have been there. I like, you know, after your team and lost so many winnable games, you like, damn. Bro, I had gave I had given up on that. When it was twenty eight to fourteen dollars. I said, well, I said, you know, it's just that type of season for Green Bay. Mm-hmm. You know, I called Dallas to win for a reason. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, I guess, you know, fuck it. They, they, you know, I started watching something else. Then I looked on Facebook and I saw my boy Eddie posted, I hate losing to Aaron Rodgers and the little hey, uh, uh, I won't uh, even cussing look. face emojis. I was like, wait, y'all lost? What they can it? Like, I was like, I, I just started, la- I started laughing my ass off. I did. We got another can back there, too. Uh-oh. We talking at work again? Huh? Here we go. No, 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 no. no I was going to say, here we go. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm messing with you. No, I won't even go say his name, but it's like, remember what I told you, like, last week? When, um, last time, it was like, like, kind of like, you when you go down Facebook, when, like, you, you don't be on Facebook for, like, while the game is on, and then you come back the next morning, you see all the Dallas Cowboys fans, so they cry for help. Mm-hmm. I was just watching. I was looking at Eddie Six. I was like, "Damn, man, that man." <laughs> he was like, <laughs> it was funny. "He hate, bro. He hate Aaron Rodgers, bro." <laughs> hey, he was like, "Man, I felt so bad for Eddie, man." Damn, <laughs> he man. Hate, he hate Aaron Rodgers, bro. bro. <laughs> he was like, he was like, "Why? <laughs> Why would he never be?" Because he was supposed to come over here and watch the game. But I think he didn't because every time every time he comes over to watch a, a Cowboys game, they always lose. I'm being dead serious. Every time Eddie's come over here to watch a football game, the Cowboys lose. So I said, you know what? I know he don't want to lose to Aaron Rodgers again. So I was like, that's probably why I haven't heard from him because I cooked on the grill and everything yesterday. Oh, you did? Yes, I did. And I was like, I ain't heard nothing from this nigga. 
So I was like, okay. Then I, when I thought about it, I was like, oh, yeah, he probably think I'm a jinx. And I picked the Cowboys to win. But like I said, when it was 28-14, I stopped. It's the fourth quarter. You know Dallas made history yesterday, bro. That for the first time in their franchise history, they had never lost a game when they went into the fourth quarter up by two touchdowns. Never. Oh, well. They were like 169-0. Bless them, people. Hey, Rebecca. <laughs> Can you bring can you bring that bag with that with that cup of ice in it and that empty container? You got it? Yeah. But yeah, what? God bless them people. It feel like oh, everything was right with the world. Like we won. Don't it? Don't it? The, the, <laughs> Dallas lost. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can just push over for one more week. Right. You know, like like even though my Broncos lost, you know, and on my ESPN, that's the first thing to come up, you know. Denver loses. But then when I scroll down and see Aaron Rodgers leads come from behind overtime when the, everything just seemed yeah. magical again. Yeah. Aaron, just, yeah, just seemed, like, Aaron Rodgers like, had well, Aaron Rodgers has restored his name for the season. Yeah. yeah but, but you remember like two weeks ago, exactly two weeks ago when we, when we were talking about it, and I was like, you know what I'm saying? You know, I kept saying like, we'll see. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes, you know, it, it, take, a, it take a while. One thing... Just like the NFL is the highest level of football, you know that that is the highest level. But but and but one thing one thing that like to me, if they don't one thing, it once people got enough tape on you. They, oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's why I remember back in the day when Tom Brady was with the fucking Patriots and they would beat everybody. They would beat. They would be whoever it was. They would be the, the Monstars and Space Jam. <laughs> then they fuck around and lose to the, they fuck around and lose to the Browns, who just had a coaching change. And, right, right, right. Because <laughs> you know, right. there's no tape on what the fuck you can do. So these these offenses with these fast ass receivers is like super fast. And when and when I say offenses with fast ass receivers, I mean everybody. Who don't have Patrick Mahomes as a quarterback, but everybody else once they, <laughs> once they have enough tape on you or Tua, because Tua got a track team. Yeah, right, right. I, but I'm saying that's that's gonna remember we, first week. First week, I told you. I said, look, they need to wrap this up. You yeah, know? and remember I said that. I yes, said, they need to wrap this up because I have it. I have it on man. tape. I have proof that he said that. Yeah, yeah. This, this you know, what I'm saying this. But I, I, I have, I'm, I'm confident that it will be wrapped up in due time and at the right time. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? At the right time, it just, it just feel like man, my biggest, your, your initial question was my takeaway from the game. And I'm not trying to be selfish, but I was, you know, I'm focused on my team. Oh, get, I, it. oh no, totally, I get it. No, and my, my thing is, you know, we, we, uh, because it seems like every game, except for the Patriots, except for the Patriots, except for the Chiefs game. When, that we lost by double digits, and the nigga fumbled at the, on the kickoff. You know what I'm saying? We have been like right there. Every game we have been right there. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like how I feel right now. I really, 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 really need us to beat Cleveland. And then after that game, win or draws, I really, really need us to beat whoever the fuck after that. You know what I'm saying? It's saying like we right there. Like if he can get if he can get a little bit of grunt out of out of Auden, and a little bit of Welker, I mean, a little bit of uh, uh, Edelman out of Scotty Miller, we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel. I know we lost Shaq Barrett. Man, fuck Tom Brady. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm, I, I know. I, I'm sorry. You know, I have nothing against your team's organization. No, no, I just no, want no, you to no, know that. I, I would, And I would feel the way you feel, too, if he won my quarterback. Exactly. Man. There you go. No, I totally understand. I re- See, I re- that, I that's re- why. That's why we were we on the same page here. I re- I respect your feeling. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Plus you got you got Russell. But hey, boy, Man, you please. Wait a minute. Then y'all then y- then y'all beat the net. Then y'all. I heard y'all beat the shit out the net. Oh, the, oh, you done totally switched to basketball. Yes, the Lakers I, did beat the Nets without LeBron. Without LeBron, that is something. Don't try to say that to make me feel better that I'm having a crap. No, no, I'm no. having a crappy football and basketball season. God damn it! Don't be sitting here trying to change the subject. But it's cool. But the last couple of years, yo, you you have won an NBA championship. I have. Bowl. Yes, I have. In, in less than in, in less than 
that Super Bowl was a while ago now, though, bro. That was the 2015 but season. But, it, but as far as the fan, because, see, we always talk about life fans, but as a fan, we don't ever talk about life fans as a, as a, as a fan, as a sports fan. Right. And, and, and 10 years, 10 years, it could be a lot. It could be a little bit. You know? Oh, yeah, man. But, it, but, if, but if you got two championships on both your teams in less than 10 man, years. Man, look, look. I Look, look, look. There was a time period where I was going through a stretch where I was on top of everything. I mean, like, 97, 98, the Broncos went back to back. 98, the 98, 99, 2000, the Lakers, I mean, the Yankees won three straight. 2000 to 2002, the Lakers won three straight. That was a time period. That was a good, like, little six, seven-year period where all my teams was winning. Yeah. All my motherfuckers was winning. And you and you good because see and then look at me in that time frame. You know what I'm saying? I've been a I've been a Tampa Bay fan since '96, '97. You know what I'm saying? We won't shit. You know what I'm saying? I was a Miami. I've been a Miami fan since my daddy, who was an ex cracker, told me that motherfucker was <laughs> back it. So I, you know what I'm saying? I, I took my my took I took my fifth grade school pictures in that jacket. So I said that's my team. Right. You know what I'm saying so so come '96, ain't nobody hitting come come all that time. Ain't nobody hitting no shit to '02. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, we we won the Super Bowl. Then four years later, Miami win that jank. And then Miami, like, then six years after that, they go they go to the finals. What four times? Oh, you talking about the Heat? The Heat, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Four straight so, years, yeah. Yeah. So it is what it is, man. You all right? I don't know what's going on with the Broncos though. I don't think nobody knows. Going I wish to- they need to get rid of that fucking coach, man. I mean, honestly, we come off of a bye week looking that horrible. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Like, yeah. honestly. Like, we honestly, yeah, that, this, honestly, I'm not trying to be funny. This is why I was low key rooting for Jacksonville to beat us in the game in London. Get this motherfucker, Nathaniel can't hack it. Yeah. Get him the fuck off my football I, team, bro. He stinks. Call Sean I, Payton. Call Sean Payton. Call some. Call me, goddammit. I'll take the yeah, job. Uh, yeah, yeah, call Sean Payton. You know what I'm saying? That'll, that'll, I, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. That makes a whole lot of sense, cause I, you know, and I can see that shit. Y'all gonna be saying shit, different toilets, the rest of the year. He gonna be gone. Call Sean Payton, and. And, get, and let's get this shit cracking. We we stuck with Russ till he's forty. Crackin'. We got Russ for the next seven years. Call right, Sean right. Payton. You know we got good receivers. I'm glad they didn't trade Judy. Um, even though his ass can't never stay healthy. But um, call Sean Payton. Get hacking the fuck up out of here. It's just like I was telling um. Like I was just telling Tony, not every coach is meant, and not every coach is meant to be a head coach. Some some coaches are just better as coordinators. Josh McDaniels, he's better as an offensive coordinator. He sucks as a coach. Uh, Hackett, he's another one. He's a better as an offensive coordinator. I'm, I'm, Matt Patricia, better as a coordinator. I, I'm beginning to think that my boy Todd Bowles may be in that same position. I, he might. He might be. He might. He might be just. Be, he might just be better as a defensive coordinator. He might. Oh, he might not be because. But you know what though? As far as my team is concerned, the defense. Because you can only. You can. You can only. The way that. Because you know a team is built to do certain things a certain way, and the way that team is structured, we are built to get the lead. I mean, I'm serious. Like, and I ain't gonna say like everything don't want this. Everything wants this, but we are simply built to get the lead and rush the pass. Get the lead and rush the pass. Once we hang around, well, we are not one of those teams that you, our defense is not one of those defenses that is built to hang around. You know what I'm saying? Because we right. at its size. You know what I'm saying? We have one. Like, we have one of those smaller. We have one of those smaller Tony Dungy like personnel. You know what I'm saying? That, that we are built to get the lead and run the rush the pass. So, and Todd and Todd Bowles is not on the off, offensive side. You know what I'm saying? Like not at all. First, final say because he is indeed the head coach. But the offense to me, the, the problem with us was going on defense. It was the offense. We just couldn't punch it in. Because how many times this year have you seen the offense, the defense keep us in there? Stop who the fuck we supposed to stop, and we can't just convert. We can't convert short yards. You know what I'm saying? Been plenty of times. But look, let me get your picks before I got to go get London off the bus. Um, Thursday night game, Tennessee at Green Bay. Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to go. Fuck it. I'm going to go with Green Bay. Okay. Okay. They, go. they, proved yeah, you right. they proved you right yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. You, I got to do that. I'm talking to you too, so I have the shit. No, you're all right. Uh, Chicago, Chicago at Atlanta. 
I'm going with Chicago. That's a pure Falcons hatred pick right there, y'all. I want you to know. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm messing with him. What was the first? What was the first? Green Bay. Okay, Green Bay. Uh, and then who did who the Falcons play? Chicago. Sure. You pick Chicago. I pick Chicago. Yeah. Hold on, huh? Cleveland at Buffalo. Buffalo. Okay. Philly at Indianapolis. Philly. The Jets at the Patriots. Ooh. Yeah, that's a that tough one, good. right? That's, that's, that's a different question two, three years ago. Right. That was a different um, question last year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go with the Jets. You going to the Jets? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. The Rams at the Saints. Two disappointing teams from this year for this year. Going with the Rams. Yeah. All right. Detroit at the Giants. Let me try Detroit. Ooh, ooh, okay. Carolina at Baltimore. Carolina's going to start Baker Mayfield this week. Yeah, I can't wait. Baltimore. <laughs> Washington and Houston. <laughs> Uh, Houston. <laughs> oh, the two most disappointing teams in the AFC this year. The Raiders at the Broncos. Y'all might get some people. Okay. But I picked y'all last time, man. Y'all ain't. I'm going to pick y'all again. Okay. Pick us at your own risk. Um, Dallas at Minnesota. Minnesota. Okay, go Vikings, go. Kansas City at the Los Angeles Chargers. KC. KC in this house. Cincinnati at Pittsburgh Sunday Night Football. Cincy, baby. <laughs> Bengals going with the Natty. Uh, Monday Night Football, San Francisco at Arizona. San Fran. All right. So Calvin has as follows, Green Bay, Chicago, Buffalo, Philadelphia, the Jets, the Rams, the Lions, the Ravens, the Texans, the Broncos, the Vikings, the Chiefs, the Bengals, and the 49ers. Does that sound about right, sir? Yeah, that's right. All right, sir. Well, I definitely appreciate your time there, boy. I will hit you up soon there, boy. You got to come over here, man. I can't wait for the day you text me in the offseason or you call me the offseason. Yeah, man. Y'all getting um, Lamar? Y'all getting Lamar Jackson? Yeah, well, you'll be waiting for that one. I'll be waiting for that one. <laughs> you'll be waiting for that one. But hey, bro, why well, you you should come over on Sunday, bye. Come holler at your yeah. bye. I will. All right, homie. All right. Later. His ass ain't coming over here on Sunday. I guarantee you that. But still, <laughs> that's my bro, Big C. But you know the prediction Monday ain't a prediction Monday unless I got the broski on here. What up, Sean? What is good, my dude? Oh, man, everything is good when your team undefeated. Everything is always good. Hey, look, we still got a game to play tonight, so I ain't talking no smack. So, uh, look, everything good when your team is undefeated and those other boys lost in Green Bay. Uh, but I can't talk about them sorry ass cowboys out of my fucking trash. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Dak Prescott. Oh, uh, And let me cry for Cooper Rush. Oof. Mm, man. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm starting to hear a lot of Cooper Rush shit too, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, but it's about to be uh, ugly over there, but you know. Especially if they lose their game next week. Especially if they lose their game next week, but we'll but we'll get into that in a minute. How you feeling though, Broski? Uh, you know how it is, man. You know what I'm saying? We got a game tonight against those command doors. This is the potential trap game because you know nothing is easy when it's a suspension game. They know us very well. We know them. We already played them. So who knows what's going on? Just hope that we can adjust. See, I don't I, think I, I, this I don't think this game is a trap game because it's too fam- it's it's too much familiarity. I don't think any division game is a trap game because you know them. I think your game next week is a trap game. What, Tennessee? No, Indianapolis. That's the trap game. We play in the <laughs> Yes, you do. <laughs> oh, yeah. When Matt Ryan, man, if we lose to Jeff Saturday, I'm going to. That's what I'm saying. That's the trap game. <laughs> I'm going to say this like I've been saying all show about the Colts. 
Nothing is more dangerous than a team that believes. Man, we gonna, they, they can believe all they want to. We're going to believe that ass book. <laughs> <Yeah, man. laughs> they are happy this week. Oh, I know me some football. I know how to coach these boys. I know how to do what I want to do. Next week, I'm going to get my ass put by these guys that are eating. What the fuck going to happen? You better sit your ass They are happy. <laughs> Raiders are absolutely ass. I don't even know how Josh and Daniel still got a job right now in this Monday morning. Ooh, it's funny because I was literally just literally like five minutes ago, well, about say about ten minutes ago, just talking about that with Calvin of how some coordinators are just better left as coordinators. Every coordinator doesn't make a great coach, and Josh yeah. McDaniels is one of them. He is in bad business, bro. I don't know how he how how did you lose somebody who just inherited the team, ain't never coaching the NFL <laughs> college level, and at home, hey. and at home. And at, and at home in your crib. Yeah. And y'all still long. Ooh, bro. Ain't no way you got a job today. No way. And then you got Derek Carr crying on on the podium and shit. And he was hurt. <laughs> was hurt. He was so hurt. That man can't even get it out. And to, and to put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> and to make that damn ball look. Like, that shit was hilarious, man. <laughs> he, was sad, he was sad as hell, man. I felt bad for that man because he know he done. He done. He know he done. He know he done. And he still got to go out there and play, but ain't no way in hell he going to be the quarterback of the Raiders next year. I tell you what, because uh, Tony was saying this to me earlier, he, he, he said exactly what you said. I said, if Derek Carr is gone, Devontae Adams going to demand a trade. Yeah, that's it. That, of course, because he, he all pepped up. I came here to be with my guy and guy, this, that, and the fifth. Of course, he's going to demand a trade because they could be rebuilding. He didn't go there to rebuild. That thing is a mess over there, bro. So, to me, what that means is, with that being said, that just means McDaniel's going to get fired uh, first. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Josh McDaniel's going first. Of course. Like I said, he shouldn't have a job this morning. He should be gone. He should be out of there. Well, you know what? You know who needs to be out there with him? Nathaniel motherfucking can't hack it. Because to, for us to look that bad coming off of a bye week, yeah. bitch, you terrible. Yeah. Off of, yeah, yeah. Come, bro, coming off of a bye week, nigga. Man. To look that bad. And, and then on top of that, to make it worse, we up 10 nothing, And then we just, then the roof cave in. Mm-hmm. And, bro, like, we match up good with Tennessee. We match up good. And I'm like, bro, like, because I just started thinking about it. I was like, we didn't even play last week. And we looked this horrible, this bad. Like, bro, bro got to go. So he need to be in that unemployment line right along with Josh McDaniels. Little fucker. Uh, yeah, a lot of people don't need to be. It, it need to be a lot of opportunities they need to give to these coaches who've been here and that everybody. It's never the coaches that everybody says should get it. It's always somebody come out of left field or... And that you don't know nothing about. He just got a good uh, connection with somebody that gets these coaching jobs. And they just be terrible, bro. Like, man. Bro, let me tell you uh-huh. something. Let me tell you something. And I mean this to the bottom of my soul. I would rather have Dan Campbell as my coach than Nathaniel Hack. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. Because at least, at le- like, bro, the Lions, if, if, if nothing else, the Lions will give you their best. Every week. You can tell. You can, you can tell people play for certain coaches, bro. Certain yeah. Coaches you can tell and Jeff Saturday might be one of them coaches, bro. Mm-hmm. Robert Sala, one of them coaches. Hey, yes. Bro. Yes. You can, tell the, you can tell the passion that people got for the game, and it's like these ex-players, bro. It's you. These people that they're in there, they, they can tell, man. Bro, you know what? If we can't get, if they fire Nathaniel Hackett and we can't get Sean Payton as our coach, you know who I want to be our coach? Yeah. One of either two people, either Ray Lewis or Shannon Sharp. Hey, Shannon Sharp, hey, Shannon ain't hey, the coach. Shannon want to be a coach? No, Shannon ain't leaving undisputed to be a coach. Hey, yeah, I don't know. He like the shit, no. I mean, he needs you because all the hell they talk about is Tom Brady, LeBron James, and the, and, and the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's guaranteed when you turn that bitch on with your hair, bro. That's oh, yeah. Oh, oh, hell yeah. 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 But I'm serious because, I mean, it's like, okay, I understand that young offensive minds offensive minds are becoming head coaches. I get yeah. that. But when you got a quarterback like Russell Wilson who's been in the game long enough where he can run his own offense. Absolutely. All I need now is a motivator. 
That's really all I need now. I need a motivator. I don't need Nathaniel Hackett. Fuck him. Get out of here. Yeah, we need to motivate Russell Wilson. Somebody, somebody need to tell Sierra to fall the fuck back. <laughs> she can't, <man. laughs> I'm like, damn, Russ, like Russ. I know, I understand. That man out the playbook. He ain't in the playbook like he used to, according to Russ. is in the playbook doing his thing all about football. Now he out there with Ducky Future trying to be better. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah, he ain't in the playbook because because he in that yeah. he in that house playbook right now. Yeah, yeah. He, he in the uh, operation yeah. spread legs. He, he living in fame, bro. He living in fame, uh, uh, bro. And the bro just got that big ass bag guarantee contract, bro. I need, like I said, I'm gonna need Sierra to fall the fuck back, man. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. fall back and smoke that Colorado weed. Let Russ get in his playbook. <laughs> <laughs> but look, hey, look. Last week, yesterday, neither of us had a great day. You had a better day than me because I was just terrible yesterday, bro. I was trash. Yeah, yesterday yesterday. Was horrible, bro. I, no, no, nigga. You you had two better than me. I was trash yesterday, bro. I was hey. garbage. That's the thing. That's the NFL season, man. You never know. Anything. I was, yeah. It, I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy because. You gained a little ground on me because David won the day yesterday. Because mm-hmm. David picked the Lions. David picked the Lions to win. Did he? Yeah. Uh, and he picked the Vikings to win. Now, this is what I want to ask you. How about that Vikings-Buffalo game? Man, that was a game. That was a game, boy. That joke was tough. I was thinking in that thing like, man, it's over. Every time I said it was over, it wasn't over. Bro, I was about, literally, bro, I was about yeah. to, I was about to, Pencil Buffalo in as a W. And then Patrick Peterson got that first interception. I said, okay, okay. let me wait. Patrick Peterson got that first interception. It was 27 to 10 then. Then Dalvin Cook ran for that long touchdown run. I said, okay, I won't. I said, but surely Buffalo's at home. They're not going to blow this. And then you cover the rest, brother. Yeah, uh, they definitely, uh, they definitely blew it though, bro. <laughs> I can't believe. Well, first of all, let's talk about this amazing just Jeff cat. Oh my uh, God! Out there, that just out there, uh, Odell. I don't care, Odell. Yeah, he got that pass in it, but he was still free. That man put that thing and snatched it out of his hands, bro. And still, he still did, did the Odell back a back jump and then still snatched it. And it was on. It was a make or break play too. I, yes, okay. yes, it was yes, over with, bro. Yes, it was that, that over to, with. to me, that's the big thing. The the yes. situation, the circumstance it of the was, catch, the circumstance of that catch too, boy. And he made that joke happen, boy. And and I just want to say, uh, although it's been great, fuck you, Howie Roseman, for getting Jalen Rager instead of goddamn Justin Jefferson. <laughs> 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 like, I, I mean, we still good. Hey, no, but still, dog, you still like that's like this man out here, goddamn, crushing all the fame records, bro. But that's like, two straight yeah. years because the year before he could have got Metcalf instead he got Arcega Whiteside. Yeah, 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 Metcalf. But I mean, still, that, like that's just that, that boy out here go crazy. But I mean, who, who knows though? Because if we get him, we out of position. Stuff don't fall the way it's falling right now. I, no, it's just if yeah, you but, get him, you you there's no need for AJ Brown. Yeah, there's no need for AJ Brown. Probably no need for Devontae Smith. Mm, okay, maybe. I mean, everything happens uh, for a reason. Again, Let's put it that way. That's what I'm saying because it's butterfly fact. Because again, if we got him, maybe we win a couple of games. We're not in the positions we had to get certain people. Now. That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. No, you know what I'm saying. But still, fuck you, High Rosa. Uh, anyway, man, you love you loving Howie Roseman right now. Stop, yeah, stop playing. I am stop playing because that motherfucker put y'all in position to be great for the next at least five years. Man, at least, and if we fucking really get a top five pick and trade that John out and get more first round picks, that's what I'm hoping happens. But you know, that's another story for for another time. Coming around these draft orders, you, know, you feel me? Oh, well, yeah, but no, but back to that catch. The situation yeah, of it was just crazy because you know when Odell made his catch. It was spectacular. Take nothing away from him. But that was that that put the Giants up seven to three in that game. If Justin Jefferson doesn't make that, and it might have been, by the way, the Giants still lost that game. Absolutely, yep, they still lost. Yeah, they still and, lost. If Justin Jefferson doesn't make that catch, Minnesota loses that game. Yeah, bro. 
And the fact that he, with his one hand, took it out of a dude who had two hands on the ball, <laughs> fall, <laughs> falling backwards. I, I know he hurt, bro. He got drafted, though, man. He, that was his first start, if I want to say. That was his first start. Yeah, it don't it matter, was... no, bro. But this is what I'm saying. Like, when you're on fourth, I don't give a damn how undrafted or how much of a first start it is. You've been watching football long enough that in a situation like that, just knock the ball down. Just yeah. knock it down. And that's it. He should have smacked it down. Because yeah. if you knock it down, you're getting the ball back closer than what it was before the pass was thrown, genius. He was greedy, though, man. He, wanted he was being greedy. Wanted... Yes, he wanted, he wanted his name in them stats. Uh huh. His name could have been in the stats uh, as somebody who ended the game and got his team the dub. Instead, you got uh, Moss. You got Moss. Now his name gonna be forever Moss. You you got and, my, and, and to make it worse, you got Moss by a nigga who plays for the Vikings. Yeah, he is forever Moss. <laughs> you are linked That's to being nice. burnt on the possibly greatest catch ever. Yeah, real talk. Real time. On fourth and four, bro, fourth and eighteen. Yeah, but then let's even go over to this 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 goal line fumble, which man, take the sack, bro. If y'all that nervous, take the sack and get the safety punt and he'll get your defense back on. At least your defense you get away from it. You can't fumble on the goal line and get him the lead. That's crazy. Well, I, I tell you why I tell you why they didn't take the sack. And I don't disagree with you, but I tell you why they didn't take the sack. Because their defense at that point was worn out. You remember, they got the ball. There's a reason why they got the ball back on the one-yard line. Yeah, they made a play. But think about it. If they had taken a safety, it was still like 45 seconds left. And that point, they would have only been up. Uh, what what the fuck? Um, a field goal would have still. What was the score at that point? Because the field, because it was 27-23. It they still would have needed, needed a touchdown. Yeah. They still would have needed a touchdown, but at that point, could you really trust your defense that even even with just forty five seconds? And you probably saw what the and you you still probably thinking about what Justin Jeff Justin Jefferson has torched you now. Justin Jefferson, you have nobody that can cover that man. So I understand why they didn't go for the safety, but even but even with that happening, bro, they still got the ball back. They still got that gift no call because Gabe Davis dropped the pass. They got oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, tell me how. how Tell me how did that not get uh, called back to watch and for them to replay it. See, this, 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 this is why people think games are rigged. They got to be because you have to look at something like that. You have to. You got to. It, 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 it's up to y'all to stop it because it's under two minutes. It's up to them to stop it. And for a big play like that and nobody actually knows whether or not he caught it because it's like that, you have to look at that. And once you see the replay... New York needs to stop that. Right, right. So I mean, but even so, even with the uh, great Justin Jefferson catch, and then them stopping him, and then the fumble with the touchdown, you know, you still drove the ball. You had the no call, which you're absolutely right. You have to stop that. Buffalo still ties the game. I mean, with all of that said, you still had a whole nother quarter, pretty much, yeah. that was played. With all of that shit. And Josh Allen giving the game away with Patrick Peterson intercepting it in the end zone to win the goddamn game. So let me ask you something. Have we overrated Buffalo or have we underrated Minnesota? Uh, first of all, I want to say we underrated my motherfucking Eagles because for some reason, <laughs> we ain't played nobody. And we the only one that beat Minnesota. That made them look like they won't shit, but they always oh, prime time. Kirk can't do that every day with motherfucking prime time. I don't give a shit. What are you talking about? But they got their asses whipped. And all oh, let them play Buffalo. They destroy, they beat Buffalo. So, hmm, hmm, what does that say about my team? Let's just get that the fuck out. It's making my Buffalo uh, Eagles Super Bowl pick look kind of sh- kind of shaky. You need to go and look at that Miami team. Over I think, yeah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> That's Because it's looking like a KC Miami goddamn AFC championship game. Yeah. Oh my lord! Oh, do you know? Oh, do you know how great that would be? Yeah, Not poo pooing on Buffalo, but Tyreek Hill against his former team. You know who would be the craziest fucking Super Bowl? Uh, Tua and Jalen Hurts Super Bowl, wouldn't it? Okay, two. Two 
motherfuckers that was on the cusp of getting their ass the fuck up off their team, and now they in the Super Bowl. Who were teammates in college? It goes to show you that, motherfucker, you just need pieces around you. Can't nobody do that shit by their goddamn self. Bro, let me tell you something. If it's the Eagles and the Dolphins in the Super Bowl, we will officially have the Ace Ventura Super Bowl. (laughs) Because <laughs> if you remember the oh, end of the oh, first Ace Ventura movie, it was the Dolphins and the Eagles playing in the Super Bowl. Dan Marino, had, yeah, I remember that shit. <laughs> but no, but if uh, but all, all, <laughs> all honestly, if it's the Eagles and the uh, Dolphins in the Super Bowl, the storylines would be endless. Yeah, they would be endless. Just with Jalen Hurts and Tua alone because you had two teammates. Tua had to come in for Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts was benched in a national championship game because for Tua. And Tua wins the national championship. The next year, Tua is benched for Jalen Hurts or got hurt or something to win the SEC. And Jalen Hurts comes in and wins the SEC championship game to send them to the college football playoffs. Oh, that would be, please. there, There are writers out there that are wishing for that. I guarantee you. Man, I was a poet. <laughs> you know why? Well, look, I think the Eagles are going to the Super Bowl out of the NFC right now. I'm torn with the AFC. Could it be Buffalo? Could it be uh, Miami? Could it be the Ravens? Because you could see Lamar versus Jalen Hurts too now. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, you, you could, could see Patty. You could, you could see. You, and, and Roquan Smith edition is looking pretty good for the Ravens. You could see Andy Reid versus former team in the Super Bowl. Uh-huh. So it's a lot. It's a lot. And we still, we still got to get there, too. I ain't going to this game by game. I'm taking the mentality of my quarterback. We take it as game by game. And A.J. Brown. Night. A.J. Brown said we ain't proved nothing yet. Tonight, we shall lay the smack down the partner's side, Commander. <laughs> and, and you know what? See, there are two teams in the NFC well, three teams that nobody wants to believe in. But you got to look out for them. Now, Geno Smith and them lost yesterday. I understand that. Yeah. And now, I said this to Calvin. I was on the phone with Calvin before I was on the phone with you. I said, if Geno Smith had one more possession, that's all I said. I said, if he had one more possession in that game, because in the, because, because in the fourth quarter, the, the Bucks defense couldn't stop him. The other teams yeah. are... The Vikings. Nobody wants to believe in the Vikings. And the Giants. You still got to deal with the Giants. And I know how you say the Commanders all always play y'all tough. No, bro. It ain't the Commanders who play y'all tough all the time. It's some goddamn New York Giants who play the well, Eagles the tough all the time. We can't. We can't. Our, our, our weakness, I see, is mobile quarterback. Uh, if, if, and Daniel Jones, for some reason, we be breaking camp on us every game. If you look at it, he got a big run on us. He just can't see the stand upright when he running the big run. He just trip over the turf. <laughs> you got to let that go. You got to let <laughs> that go. <laughs> that motherfucker was gone. He was gone and then tripped up 20 yeah. yards before he got to the end zone. Dumbass. Yeah, but they got beat because uh, they caught a beat. And I told you they going to have a good year. He just needed to stay healthy. So the Giants, I mean, and their defense is coming together. I mean, and of course, like to be honest, man, the NFC is pretty like not flourishing <laughs> this year. It's like not a lot of good teams. There's a lot of bad coaching, bad football teams out here. Um, and that's not to take nothing away from them or, or us or anybody in the NFC that's doing their thing. Because football, you, you go out there, everybody's a professional to play the game. But I mean, you can look at see the sloppy games and. The no communication. I don't know what's going on. It's looking like bad football out here in the NFC. But hey, hey, we got you go to play who's in front of you and shit like that. And I, I, I'm, I'm scared of the Giants like a month. I ain't gonna say I'm scared of them, but I mean they are a tough team. They, they, yeah, they, I, I, they, I, they give Philadelphia the, out of the oh, over the last five six years. Uh, you know, in the NFC East, I've seen the Giants give the Eagles more trouble than anybody. In particular, Saquon Barkley. Now, I didn't like what the Giants did with him yesterday, even though I understand why. But, you know, now, oh, before this game, before the game yesterday about, uh, before the game yesterday against the Texans started, they were talking contract extension with Saquon because now that he's healthy, has a has an average offensive line, you see what he is. He's an elite top three running back in the league. And then you run him 35 times yesterday? 
the Titans ain't ran Derrick Henry 35 times in the, yet this season. So what I'm That's saying is, got, but now I understand that. But don't Demarco Murray this man like Dallas did, and run him into the ground so you can find a reason not to pay him. I get it that I get it that he is the centerpiece of your offense. You should be able to beat the Texans without running Saquon 35 times. Listen to me, they can, they can. Oh, can you give me one second, bro? I got a party card. I have to take this. No, go ahead. I, I got you. Right. I got you. All right. All right. Now, as I was saying, I'm going to talk to the audience for a second. Now, like I said, my issue with the New York Giants is Saquon Barkley is 25 years old. You know, there's been a version of the NFL that now thinks that running backs become old once they reach the age of 27, which is a total untrue if you use your backs correctly. <clears throat> Derrick Henry, who's seen by many. Okay, okay, let me finish this thought. Derrick Henry by many is seen, is seen as the best running back in football. He's 28. To me, the best running back in football right now is Nick Chubb from the Cleveland Browns. He's 27. Saquon is 25. Don't try to run this man in the ground so you can find a reason not to pay him. You are not 7-2 if you don't have a healthy Saquon Barkley. Okay, Sean, you're back. Let me tell you something. Uh, you have to run that man. They don't have any other playmakers on that team besides him. And uh, Darius Slayton, though. Darius Slayton. Well, Slayton, too, yeah. But, I mean, uh, I mean, he's your biggest He's your biggest threat. And they can go ahead and run him to the ground if they want to. And I tell you that, man, please let him go in this market because I would love. <laughs> well, I was hoping they stuck this year and wanted to trade him. So you you want to see Saquon and Green? Man, please. Yeah. And by the way, by, by the way, Kenny Galladay got booed off the field yesterday. Just thought I'd point. He's out. a dog. I'm so glad we didn't get him because I was we was so needed any kind of wide receiver. And if we'd have paid, been paying that that motherfucker some money for us, man, look. I would have been upset. That is the worst. I mean, he got to steal the money. He, he's stealing more money than Sam Bradford did. Yeah, oh, real talk. Real talk. Because <laughs> at least Sam Bradford had his ha, he he had his hand on the ball every play. Yeah, Kenny Galladay has been awful. I mean, absolutely awful. And that man out here getting the paycheck, but he robbing them blind, boy. You ain't never lied about I'd that. Mad. I'd be mad, bro. <laughs> I'd be super mad. But yeah, I'm so glad. We dodged that bullet though, but uh, yeah, man. Looking, uh, 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 uh the Giants, yeah, they're looking pretty decent. And like I said, they, they, they can uh, let Saquon go if they want to. I would gladly take that. I would gladly take that. They ain't letting like, Saquon go. You know that. Man. But are you paying Danny Dow? No, no. I'm gonna tell you what they're gonna do with Dan with, with Daniel Jones. They're gonna franchise tag him next year again. Yeah, and make them do another. No, it ain't again. This will be the first time. Cause this is the last year of his rookie deal. They're gonna oh, yeah. franchise tag him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are, but they're gonna probably bring in somebody else too, though. Yeah, but see, they're gonna franchise tag him. Seeing can because the Giants, because I'm, I'm pretty much on the mindset now that the Giants are going to the playoffs this year. So they're gonna, they're gonna franchise tag him to see. Well, can you do this two years in a row? They probably just give him weapons because that's what that, that's what you're seeing uh, in this league right now. You give somebody weapons and give them a, a, enough weapons, and you coach to their strengths. Everybody, it's, it's almost like the equivalent to basketball stacking your rosters now with superstars to win right now. If you look at these teams that's flourishing right now, look at their superstars that they have. You need an abundance of, abundance of playmakers in order to attack teams differently, in order to destroy them. Like, look, the Rams last year, they got a whole bunch of people and then a whole bunch of uh, free agents or whatever the case may be started coming to their team to fill up. They won the Super Bowl. Look at this, look at look at Miami. You got Tyreek with Jalen Waddle over that jump. And now they see, hmm, we need more than what we got. You go get Bradley Chubb from y'all on the defensive side. Like you need names the playmakers are all over are all over your field for the most part in order to really compete in this league and it's like superstar names, not just no regular one. Buffalo grabbing Von Miller off that jump. 
to go along with Stephon Diggs. They needed to go with Josh Allen to do all of this stuff. And you see, you see how the Rams are looking since Whitworth and Vaughn Miller retired. <laughs> yeah, it's like, man, you need, I mean, you need people around you. It ain't just one person can do it all. Well, then if that's the case, if that's the case, then, then uh, Daniel Jones is no different from Jalen Hurts. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say, think about that they're now. Gonna yeah, they're going to franchise tag. Yeah, they're going to franchise tag and probably put some more things around them next year and give them some weapons because look at what they had. They didn't have anything to give them. All of, all of their playmakers they tried to get it either didn't pan out or, I mean, just absolutely just been injured. So, I mean. But the fact that the I Giants think, are winning now, that makes yeah. them a more attractive free agent destination. Oh, absolutely, because it's Big Blue, New York, the media town. I mean, hell, who's to, who's to say that Odell won't decide to come back to the Giants? I mean, he would be like, uh, yeah, but nobody really, you know, everybody is just just saying Odell, Odell, Odell. You still got that man to have coming off a second ACL injury. Like, nobody knows that this man is doing for real, for real, what he's doing on the field. But, yeah, the storyline for him, if I was him, like, I mean, a playoff contender, uh, what better storyline would it be to come back to the Giants to give them playmaking and be back with that team after all that, where you started your career and all that? I I would just do that just to do that if I was Odell. Oh, if I was Odell, that would definitely be my first choice because now a lot of people would see that as kind of train riding because the Giants are winning now. I think personally, I think Odell is going to end up with the 49ers. I know there are a lot of people that want to see him with Dallas. I pray he don't go to Dallas because I like Odell. Then I'd have to hate him. I don't think I don't think Odell's going to Dallas because he already see what they doing over that. That thing is uh is a train wreck. Dallas is always a train wreck. If you go to Dallas, it would only be with uh, uh, nah. I wouldn't see him going to Dallas. Which I wouldn't even give a fuck if he went there. We'd still smack the shit out of his. Oh, I ain't scared of no fuck. Okay. <laughs> okay. Old ass. Two ACL ass. Ain't nobody scared of that motherfucker. Everybody, oh, boy, the fuck out of here. You a third option on somebody's team, but fuck out of here. Ain't nobody scared of you. Well, let's get your I, picks, I, bro. Let's get your picks. Pick the game, shout it. Pick the game, shout it. Thursday I, night, Tennessee at Green Bay. Who you got, bro, bro? My bro, good, man. Hey, Aaron Rodgers is a phony so I'm going to go with them tight and shout it. Hey, didn't Christian Watson show? He he kind of uh show what all the hype was about. Hey, he played the Cowboys, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he got no speed. He just need to keep his hands on the ball when he catch that shit. Stop dropping that shit, man. That's what it is. Your job is to catch it, man. But he got that speed. He got that length, man. He just needed, man. Give him some opportunities, man. He he get it for three speed, man. Hey, going, like, so, you can't do that. So you going with Green Bay? Uh, hell no, I'm going with the Titans sometimes. Oh, shit, I thought you were going with Green Bay. Okay, okay. No, I said, no, I said, uh, I said Aaron Rodgers is a fraud. I don't like that motherfucker. I only go and went for him because he's playing the Cowboys. <laughs> well, you actually didn't. You went with Dallas. <laughs> I know, because I wanted to make sure that if I, uh, you know. You put that bad zen on him. I got you. Man, come on, man. Yeah, you know me. Yeah, man. You know me. I'll sacrifice the L. That's the only reason why I put the cow why, why I, I picked the Cowboys to do anything. I want to put that bad zen on him. Fuck him. I tackled it, yeah, because I probably went against him. Dak Prescott was really like goddamn uh, Stephen, uh, goddamn John L. out that bitch. Yeah, Joe Montana. Okay. Yeah, he'd have been yeah, great. Yeah. Montana. Uh, Chicago at Atlanta. Chicago at Atlanta. Man, uh, Justin, uh, I, I like what Justin uh, Fields is getting. He's Ain't he? Confidence in that man, yeah. And uh, Marcus Mariota just seemed to be going the other way. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the Bears, honestly. Okay, okay. All right, Cleveland at Buffalo. Buffalo need this victory. I'm going to say Buffalo. Okay. Philadelphia at Indianapolis. Man, come on. Good. I already know. I already know. The Jets at the Patriots. All right, Jets. Okay, everybody riding that New York bandwagon head out. I ain't saying no, it ain't. You better go back to them tapes because I was already on the jet. From the oh, yeah, 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 yes, yes, you were. You were. You were, sir. Uh, I have yeah, documentation man. of that, sir. I know, I can, I know you can You can <laughs> prove it, sir. Absolutely. Um, The Rams at the Saints. The two of the disappointing teams this year. Man, like, yeah, definitely. But I'm going to go with the Rams only because I... 
needs to pay, keep taking these L's. <laughs> That's right. The selfish reasons of why Sean is picking against the New Orleans Saints. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, for the, I, you know, sometimes my, my mojo works differently because, you know, if I pick the Saints against them because I want that pick, it'll, it'll go against me. So. But for some reason, you just can't pick the Saints. They just look bad. And All the time, and, bro. But so do the Rams. I can't even lie. But, you know, I'm hoping that the, the Rams are more well coached. <laughs> well, I mean, is Stafford going to play? You know, he didn't play last game. Yeah, I mean, but you still got Andy Dalton over there. Yeah, 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 that's true, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Detroit at the New York Giants. You know, you know what? Give me, give me, give me the thing. Oh, you just changed up on me, hear that? Yeah, yeah, give me the Saints, bro. But you need the Saints to take these L's. I, I know, so give me the Saints, bro. <laughs> oh, okay, see, so trying to put the bad mojo on them. I, got <laughs> no. okay. I just think, I just think that they, uh, to be honest with you, I mean, the the the, the, the Chargers, I ain't gonna say the Chargers, excuse me, the Rams just look like, I mean, they just still on the float. They look like booty juice. Football. Yeah, they just don't look like it. And at least the defense to the Saints got something going for them. I want to say a little no, bit. No, no, they don't. All of the motherfuckers got on the we won the Super Bowl <laughs> shirt still. They do. I, Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm talking about for the Saints. Oh, uh, the, the, oh yeah, yeah, the Saints defense. Yeah, so, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the Saints on that one because the Rams, I don't think. Yeah. Okay. I don't believe it. Anymore. Okay. Well, Detroit at the New York Giants. Oh man. Hey man, the Lions won two straight games, bro. I know, and they ball. They played, but they like I. I thought they were gonna play good this year, but every time I picked them, they let me down. And. Every time I pick them, they let me down. And I, the Giants are just, you know. Winning games. Yeah, that's, they're that's winning. Give me the Giants. They're not doing nothing spectacular. They're just winning games. It's, they're just winning games. And that ain't, that's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. I've seen a team not be spectacular, just win games all the way up to the Super Bowl. It was the 0-1 Patriots. They ain't do shit spectacular. They just won games. Hey, hey that's all you got to do. Figure out how to win games. That's all that matters. Now, the Carolina Panthers have announced that they are starting Baker Mayfield this week because P.J. Walker is injured. They are starting Baker Mayfield, and they are playing at the Baltimore Ravens. So who you got, Baker Mayfield or Lamar Jackson? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with Lamar Jackson. <laughs> I would, too. Ass, bro. They ass. They are ass cheeks and chips. Mm-hmm. Cheek chips, ass. Washington at Houston. How about this? Washington at Houston. Uh, ooh, give me the commanders. Okay. Going with the old D.C. Dickich. I got you. D.C. Yeah, give me them. Give me now, them. next hey. game is the game between the two most disappointing teams in the AFC, the Raiders at the Broncos. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to do this, Brandon, but... Hey, man, look, you're not hurting my feelings none. <laughs> I saw how we looked yesterday uh, off of uh, a bye week. I, bro, I, look, listen to me. Listen to me. Ain't, ain't nobody worth... Oh, God. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go with y'all. I'm going to go with y'all. you going with us. No, don't change your mind now. Oh, ain't no changes. No, the Raiders are bad. Like, they just... They lost to the, the Colts. I mean, they ain't no company. We lost to the Colts. The fuck? Yeah, y'all lost to the cost without Jeff Saturday. Without yeah, well, okay, that's true. That's true. Good point. <laughs> Good point. No, that's bad, bro. That's bad. Good point. <laughs> Dallas at Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota. Oh, 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 that's the game. I was trying to figure out who they play. So they play Minnesota. Uh, Dallas. Right? But you want to know something? Minnesota has lost to them the last two years with backup I, quarterbacks. I would love nothing more than for the Cowboys to win that game. Why? <laughs> oh. Because for a record purposes. Yeah, but believe in your team. Fuck Dallas. Oh, no. I ain't no fuck, I, I ain't no fuck Dallas, but I believe in my team, but I don't want to. It, it, we're, it, we're guaranteed to catch the L sooner or later. Uh, some game we'll catch the L. Yeah, but oh, we'd yeah. rather have Dallas catch more L's. Yeah, but... <laughs> I need some 
Yeah. So, so what? So you're picking Dallas? Huh? Oh, no, I'm never picking Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I know I got the Vikings winning that one. And plus, I look at it like this. The Vikings owe the Cowboys. Because, again, the last two years, the Cowboys have won in Minnesota. That, with... That is just a game I don't care about. It, it, whatever the outcome be, I really don't give a shit. For I got you. It. I got you. And I understand why. I understand why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Kansas City at the Chargers. Uh, Kansas City. Yeah, the Chargers. I, 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 don't, I don't understand them. I don't know what happened to them. You know what? I'm telling you. I wish we would fire Nathaniel Hackett now and get Sean Payton in there because if the Chargers don't make the playoffs, Brandon Staley gone, and yeah. and and uh, Justin Herbert looks a lot more attractive than Russell Wilson at this point in his career to Sean Payton. That's all I'm gonna say. I mean, but the Chargers are five and three, but I mean they just lost. no, they just lost yesterday. They're five and yeah, four now. Five and four. I mean, yeah, but I mean it's not too bad. It's still above five. Like but yeah, but you're looking at that stacked team. AFC. You look at the AFC East alone, stacked. Yeah, they were they were supposed to do better than what their record is saying. Though everybody in the AFC West was supposed to do better than what their motherfucking record is showing. <laughs> That's right. That's fact. <laughs> Sunday night football next Sunday night. Cincinnati at Pittsburgh. Uh, I'm going to give it to Cincinnati. Going with who? Cincinnati. Going with the Natty. Okay. And next Monday night football, San Francisco at Arizona. Uh, the Niners. Boy, I'm telling you, NFC Championship game, Philadelphia hosting the San Francisco 49ers. I'm sticking with that. I'm telling you. Uh, we'll see. We'll I'm see. telling you, bro. Yeah. I, I'm not, and I'm not sleeping on the Vikings. I'm not. I'm really not. The Vikings are a really good team. Yeah, but the, I hope the Vikings got to play them to get there. I, I believe that's going to be the case. Because if you look at, because right now, look, Seattle's a good story. But if you look at the NFC South of how bad that division is, and I still got Tampa Bay catching a couple more L's. I'm looking at the 3-2 seeding. I see San Francisco being the third seed and having to play Minnesota in round two to get to the NFC championship game. Mm -hmm. And I see San Francisco winning that game. So, yes, Eagles, Niners, NFC championship game. Book it. I said it here first, bitch. Because <laughs> I've been saying that for the last two weeks. Now all of these sports shows want to catch up and get on game. Stop jocking me, bitch. If you want to listen to me, just sponsor me so I can tell you what I am going to say. And I ain't Kyrie. Nick. Never mind. That's a whole nother subject. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, Sean's picks are as follows. Here. Tennessee over Green Bay. Chicago over ATL. Buffalo over Cleveland. Philly over the Colts. The Jets over the Patriots. New Orleans over the Saints. Um, I said New Orleans over the Saints. Yeah. <laughs> New, New Orleans over the Rams. The Giants over the Lions. Baltimore over the Panthers. Washington over Houston. Denver what? over the Raiders. Minnesota over the Cowboys. KC over the Chargers. Cincy over the Steelers. And the Niners over the Cardinals. Does that sound about right, sir? Yeah, I'm about right back. Any pardon shots before we bounce, sir? Oh, <laughs> Say that one more time. Fuck them cowboys. Fuck them cowboys. Yeah, hey, bro. <laughs> I'm going to get at you soon, soon, soon. All right, my brother. Kiss them kids for me, man. Yo, show, show. Tell them right about that, what ass. Yes, sir. All right. All right, my brother. Later. All right, man. Y'all already know how it is when brother Sean was That's my bro, man. And But, you know, um, again, I'm saying Eagles 49ers, NFC Championship game. And before we head home for the day, uh, you know, your boy got to make. I got to redeem myself. Oh, my God. Do I have to redeem myself from last week? Because I was absolutely horrible. But still sitting in first place. And so let's see. Where is your boy going to go this week? Well, let's start off with Thursday night football. This is tough because I understand why anybody would pick the Tennessee Titans. Because they're a better football team than the Green Bay Packers. 
But something's telling me Aaron Rodgers is going to ride that win against Dallas and ride it to a second consecutive victory. I'm going with the Packers. Chicago versus Atlanta. Ooh, this gets on my fucking nerves because every time I pick the Falcons to do shit, they let me down. But the Bears, how you blow a lead like that to Detroit of all teams? Oh, I'm going to reluctantly go with the Falcons to win this game, even though I think Justin Fields fitting the ball out. I'm picking Buffalo over Cleveland. Hey, Buffalo need to win this game. And Cleveland, now you're at a point where you were looking good early in the season. Now you're at a point where you're just waiting for Deshaun Watson to come back. Philadelphia versus the Indianapolis Colts. I'm going with the Eagles. Bird gang. Biatch. Brr. This is going to be a tough game, though. Like I was telling Sean. This is going to be the trap game because the most dangerous team is a team who believes. And I believe Jeff Saturday can be a motivator, but I'm still going with the Eagles to remain undefeated to go to 10-0 after this game. Jets and the Patriots. A lot of my compadres have gone with the Jets, and I understand why. But in New England, no, nah, man, I'm not going against Bill Belichick's defense. If you saw what he did to Zach Wilson last time. I think it's going to be much of the same. I'm going with the Patriots. The Rams at the Saints. Two teams that have utterly disappointed. But now I'm seeing the Rams without Matt Stafford, and he may not play this week. Now you don't have Cooper Cup. Who are you going to throw the ball to? I'm going with the Saints. Detroit at the Giants. This is a game that I could really see the Giants losing. I really could see Detroit, but especially now, they realize they have nothing to lose, and they're actually on a winning streak. But I'm going to go with Big Blue to roll into Thanksgiving Day with an 8-2 record. Carolina, excuse me. Yes, Carolina at Baltimore. Baker Mayfield starting for the Panthers. I'm going with the Ravens. I'm going with Lamar Jackson. Washington at Houston. Sean was right. Tyler Heineke does play that playground style of ball. He does. And ever since he's been in, in the lineup, Carson Wentz has been out. Washington has been playing a hell of a lot better. Expect them to play a hell of a game tonight, too, albeit in defeat. But I will go with them to beat the Houston Texans, going with the Commanders. Las Vegas at Denver. I mean, for principal, Pat, for principal reasons alone, I'm going to go with Denver to beat the Raiders. Bye, the Raiders have a worse record, but we're actually the worst team. Bye. But I'm going to go with my Broncos at home. Dallas and Minnesota. <laughs> Boy, I should pick Dallas and put that bad zen on them. But I'm going to show some faith in Kirk Cousins and say the Vikings third time's a charm. Two years ago, Andy Dalton came in and beat him. Last year, Cooper Rush came in and beat the Vikings. Wouldn't that be some shit if Dak Prescott comes into Minnesota and loses? Think of all the Cooper Rush chance that's going to come then. I'm going with the Vikings. KC at the Chargers? I don't believe in the Chargers at all. Going with the Chiefs. The Natty at the Steelers. Division game. Pittsburgh's coming off a win. Minnesota, I mean, excuse me, Cincinnati's coming off of a bye week. I'm going to go with the Bengals on this one. San Francisco and Arizona, y'all know I'm picking San Francisco because I'm calling them to roll. Okay, so that's what it is. Those are my picks. So without further ado, with a buzzer, with a buzzer, with a buzzer. Do you guys know that next Thursday, not this coming up Thursday, not three days from now Thursday, but next Thursday is Thanksgiving. Yes, Thanksgiving. And I cannot wait. But it'll be Thanksgiving, and that will make four years to the day that I started this show. How about that? And, you know, I do not go back and look at and listen to the old episodes at all. I really don't, you know, because I've thought about that, the thing about what the sports landscape was at that point in 2018. I don't because, you know, every day is a new day and I just take it one day at a time. But yes, I mean, I, I didn't mention Thanksgiving just to give the sh four year shout out of this show. I'm mentioning Thanksgiving because I can't wait because I'm ready to cook. I'm ready to crush. I'm ready to do what I got to do on Thanksgiving. So, you know, I hope that everybody has a wonderful and blessed week. And again, before before we leave again, I again want to send my thoughts and prayers with those victims and the shooting at the University of Virginia. I'm a huge UVA fan, so this hits close to home. Charlottesville is just two hours away from here. And again, let's just say a prayer for not just uh, our just not just for our country, but for the world is for the world as well. And we have to do better as a global society. We really do, because 
We have taken taken accountability of whatever grievances you have. Taking them into your own hands is not helping anything or anybody, not yourself, not your family, not anybody else's family, not the people you hurt, nothing. So, again, just keep those families um, from this tragedy at the University of Virginia in Charlottesville, Virginia. Let's just keep them in your prayers. And with that being said, this is your boy, Brandon Bravon Towns. Definitely don't hesitate to hit that subscription button. Don't hesitate to hit that like button. Yo, I mentioned my sis's, I mentioned my sis information in regards to Heather. You know, hit her up. Hit her up. Again, that is Heather's Craft Haven. Heather's Craft Haven, Craft Haven 2021 at gmail.com. TikTok at Heather's Craft Haven. Heather's Craft Haven, that's her website. And Facebook, Facebook.com slash Heather's Cricket Creations. Tumblers, keychains, bookmarks, ornaments, t shirts, made to order, girl got skills. You know, and she from the HS, y'all. Let's show us some love, okay? But it's your boy, Brandon Bravon Towns. I'm out this beer. Peace, and I love you guys. Let's stay safe. Let's love each other. Peace.